Yo, what up, Fight World? It's the kid Ego, man. Let's talk some of this boxing. Oh, yeah. Welcome, welcome. Got some things to talk about. Gather around, everybody. Boxer Eagle 2018. Let's get it. Shout out to Eagle Army, though. Eagle Mafia, I told you. We are the mob. Money on top. About. Some people keep saying money over boxing. Never that. Money on top of boxing. We got to get this money, but we still love this sport of boxing. 2018, let's go. Shout out to everybody that fell for the mousetrap, too. I like that. Yeah, Knoxville, Tennessee, in the building. my stretches I didn't do any hot seats earlier you know I might get one actually I think I did like one I gotta make sure I stay ready for the buffoons who try to invade my space in the hot seat happy new year okay let's get it let's talk some of this boxing stuff Thurman gonna get Spence. Told y'all, 2018, let's see it. Period. West, West, y'all, man. Listen, the other thing is, I'm not, this is not, I'm not saying it always works like this, because I've seen times where, like, Charlo was really calling out, I mean, uh, J Rock was calling out Charlo and then he lost the fight. But sometimes, a lot of times when the, um, when someone's like super aggressive, they really want the fight. And then when I, <laughs> me personally, when I start seeing the opponent make, see, listen, because even the Charlo J Rock situation is different because J Rock, I mean, Charlo was never, he wasn't using, he wasn't using any excuses to not fight Charlo. You know what I'm saying? Hold on. Charlo was not using any excuses to not fight J Rock. You know what I mean? Versus like the situations like Keith Thurman. He's making it seem like he doesn't want to fight Errol Spence Jr. So I can't actually, now that I think about it, I can't think of many situations where someone was aggressively being called out and the other per person was making like reasons to wait for the fight where that fight was an easy fight. Even Canelo versus Triple G. They prolonged it, prolonged it. You've seen it was a difficult fight for both fighters, not just Triple G, but also for Canelo. You know what I'm saying? So, I don't know, with the whole Keith Thurman situation. Because if you really think about it, Kill Brook was doing similar stuff to Errol Spence Jr. You know what I mean? He was like, oh, nobody really knows him, and why should I fight him next, and all this stuff. Who sound like a cheerleader? Who sound like a cheerleader? That's what I want to know. Who sound like a cheerleader? Me? Because we might have our, our first hot seat. If that's directed at me. Y'all will learn. Yeah, but the whole Keith Thurman situation, he's making it seem like he doesn't really want to fight Errol Spence anytime soon. And that's the same thing Kel Brook did. You know, nobody's really knowing him. No one knows who he is and all that. Hold on one second. So to me, a lot of times when guys do all that, no one really knows him. I need X amount of money. Um, just multiple interviews where it doesn't look like they want to fight. I think it's because they know it's a tough fight more often than not. The 
The question for Thurman, how long can you hold that title even if you allowed him to avoid Spence and Thurman fights? Hold on, let's do a roll call. Let some more people join. And then I'm going to answer that question. Roll call. I like to, at the beginning and end of my streams, I just want to know where you guys are from. City, state, zip. Rep, where you from? Let me know. Bang it out. City, state, zip. Let's go. Miami 305 in the building. One time. I see you. Where y'all at? Where y'all from? Brooklyn, New York. Shout out to my moderators. Stockton, Macramento 916, St. Louis 314, Kansas City, Oakland, California, Bay Area. Yee! Holly, Hollywood, Florida. Orlando, Greensboro, North Carolina, Mississippi. Hazard County, Maryland. Let's go, man. Where y'all from? Hawaii. Where else? Yes, where else? Where else? What else? Chicago. Shot Town. That's it. We just got people in like five states. Paramount, California. Chicago back up in this. New York back up in this. And we back to business 2018. You heard? East Gatbush, New York. Y'all be making y'all area sound extra hood and shit. Like, I don't even know if I want to go. They be like, man, Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania, Philadelphia. Like, damn. Do I even want to go to these areas? Gatbush, what the fuck? Anyway, Portland, Oregon, LOL, Houston, H Town. Y'all making these areas sound treacherous. Fucking Murderville, Kansas. Like, damn. Murderville, fuck. Catch a body in Kentucky. Like, y'all could have just said, like, you know what I mean? Like, Kansas City. Be like, kill a Kansas. Like, <laughs> y'all crazy. Chop your head off, Kansas. Like, chop your head off, Kansas. Like, fuck. Remind me not to cover no fights in Kansas. Y'all sound like some fucking serial killers and shit. This is supposed to be a roll call. Y'all telling me body counts and shit. Hell no. Nah. Chop your dick off, Connecticut. Like, chop your dick off, Connecticut. Like, remind me to stay away from CT. And I ain't no scary dude. I'm from I'm from Cali. We got our own, you know what I'm saying? We got our own issues in the Bay Area. We got our own homies and shit. But I ain't going to know. Chop your dick off, Connecticut. That's, that's what I'm not going to do. Kill your whole family. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Kill your whole family, Florida. Like, fuck. Yeah, man. Cali dudes, we smooth with our crime. Like, we drive by your shit and pow, pow, pow. You know what I mean? We, we got drive-bys. Y'all be living in them cold-ass areas. Y'all can't even do no drive-bys. The bullets fuck around and freeze or some shit. Like, pew, and the bullets just freeze in midair. But anyway, shout out to y'all, man. Let's get it cracking. Talk to this boxing. Glocked in, aka Stock. See, y'all doing too much. Everything is about like <laughs> army guns and M16 Memphis with a Mac Mini. Like, damn. Shout out to LA, man. California Love Part 2 without gay ass Dre. <laughs> nah, I'm just funny. I like Dre. But I had to say that. Y'all proud of the murder rates in y'all y'all cities and shit. Like where you from? Be more, they gon' be more bodies, be more murders. Like you could have just said Baltimore. Be more, be more drug slanging and be more killings. That's why we call it be more, cause they gon' be more of that shit. Be more beheadings, be more murders. Like damn. Man, shout out to y'all. Yeah, man, we got the hats and shit coming soon. You know, we try to stay ahead of the curve. And Ego Army's just getting stronger, so it's, it's you know what I mean? I gotta do it. The fans keep telling me. The fans run this. Eating these Tic Tacs. I know a lot of y'all care about what I'm eating or drinking. What's that? Y'all be trying to put 
hella. I'm not one of these new little rapper, little ego and shit. That's you know what I mean. That what is that Xanax? Like no, it's, it's Tic Tacs. Dallas is bad, I bet. But um, let me get back to that Keith Thurman situation. The bottom line is this: this is the best way to put it. No disrespect, to Keith Thurman. He has two belts, but to me, he's coming across like he's Mayweather, like he's accomplished what Mayweather has. And it's <laughs> the situation to me is is he's being confined because you got one guy coming up, all the skills in the world, Terrence Bud Crawford, who even though he hasn't had a fight there, he looks like he'll. I mean, if it's a continuation of what he did at 140, then <clears throat> he's gonna be a good fighter at 47. I mean, put it this way. You could say whatever. Oh, Crawford ain't done nothing. He ain't done nothing. At 147, he didn't do nothing. But guess what? When he moved up to 135 to 140, he hadn't done nothing initially. But by the time he left that bitch, he had collected all the belts. So, you know what I mean? A move up, it's a process. Nobody said he's going to go in and immediately fight Keith Thurman. But if we're judging our history, people like that have cleaned out a division or seem like they have the potential to clean out. You know what I mean? From Lomachenko to Crawford to Andre Ward, Floyd, Pacquiao. I mean, you would imagine they would have success based on their, their styles and skills <coughs> if they move up. So I'm going to give Crawford, based on what he did at 35 and 40, I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt and say that, yeah, he's going to probably have a, a success up there. Can he beat everyone? I mean, we're, we're gonna have to find that out. But it's why Keith Thurman's kind of backed into a wall. Cause you got a guy coming up and you say, oh, he's not relevant. Okay, fine. But Errol Spence is relevant. And then Keith Thurman's still kind of making reasons why that fight needs to wait. He's like, oh, this is gonna, I didn't get Mayweather. I didn't get Pacquiao. So if this is my big fight, then we gotta let it marinate. I'm not really checking for him. I got mandatories, like word up. Like, listen to Deontay Wilder's mandatory mentality. He knew if he fought Bermain Stavern, some people could still try to make excuses. And he told you out his own mouth. See, people, when I talk, I talk realistic boxing. There's like, you could do a paper trail on the shit I'm saying. Now, I mean, not everything, because some of it is just pure opinion. But a lot of it's based on... Um, what I've seen and heard. Yo, we gotta get the likes up. We have almost 100 people in here and the likes just immediately stopped. So I understand you guys wanna leave comments, but to make these live streams really work and beneficial for you guys and me and to go longer, the engagement has to be there. There's no other way to put it. Y'all gotta hit the like button, especially with the haters. Ego Army, stand up, you know what I mean? <clears throat> I got people hating videos just, just for the fuck of it. Fuck it, let them do that. But we got to do the reversal of that. Fair? Cool. Because I've been getting a lot of time to these live streams. Not saying I'm like, my time is more important. But it's the turn of the new year. And I'm up here live streaming twice in a day and shit. So show that same love that I'm showing y'all. Um, <clears throat> anyway, Keith Thurman. You got a guy coming up who's talented like Crawford. Okay, you say he's not relevant. But then why not fight Errol Spence Jr.? You know what I mean? But look at Deontay Wilder. Look at his um, mentality for his mandatory, Bermain Stavern. He's like, man, I don't want to fight Bermain Stavern. I want to pay him step aside money because basically he felt he wouldn't get the credit because he's been inactive. He got knocked down in his last fight and he hasn't really had much fights. Shout out to Jay uh, Vinson, $2 super chat to kick it off. Shmoney gang, pray to the Shmoney gods. Thank you. But Wilder himself, he... He initially didn't even want to fight Romain Stavern because he felt people would make excuses and he wanted Stavern to be, you know what I mean, fight Dominique Brazil or something, get a win under under your belt, some activity, and then there could be no excuses. So he was willing to pay his man step aside money, step aside money just to not face the mandatory, right? And even Joshua, Joshua versus Klitschko, Joshua knew it's a big fight, it's a big money fight. Fans would like a rematch, so he was willing to pay Kubrat Pulev step aside money in order to make Joshua Klitschko 2 a reality. And in my opinion, based on the first Joshua Klitschko fight, had that rematch happened, that
that's a more difficult fight for Joshua than Kubrat Pulev. So props to Joshua because he was willing to pay step aside money to the easier fight, which he clearly could have said, hey, it's, it's my mandatory. I've already beaten Klitschko. I knocked him out. Why, why, don't, why do I have to fight him? You know what I mean? But he was willing to really risk it. I mean, bottom line is this. It's not even about triangle theories. Klitschko beat Kubrat Pulev. Let's not kid ourselves. He, he knocked out Kubrat Pulev and Joshua was willing to rematch him. And the only reason the rematch didn't happen is because Klitschko decided to retire, which is his choice. But Joshua himself, just like Wilder, he was willing to avoid his mandatory to take the tougher fight. Just like Wilder was willing to push Bermain Stavern, take some money out of his purse or however it works to pay Bermain Stavern to take the tougher fight, Luis Ortiz, which it looks like we'll still get. But at the time we didn't get it because of the drug test. Right. But Keith Thurman, he keeps talking about, oh, I'm going to have to fight Sean Porter again. Danny Garcia. It's like he wants to fight his mandatory. Like he's checking for that, knowing Errol Spence would give him more stripes and be a bigger fight because Porter and Garcia, we've already seen Thurman. If, if we wanted to, there, no fantasy, we can get on YouTube, go to Premier Boxing Champs and type in um, Thurman. Porter full fight or somebody will have it on YouTube probably shit like that so any way you slice it that's what I don't like I don't like when fighters don't give credit when we know what it is you know what I'm saying we we know what it is the real boxing fans the people that matter that people that are paying would easily give Thurman more stripes by beating a fresh guy who has a lot of momentum been getting a lot of praise like a Crawford or a Spence than anybody Thurman's already beaten. Period. How can you disagree with that? How can you say I'll give a guy more credit for beating a non-champion at the moment, like Sean Porter or Danny Garcia, that you already beat, than a champion who has a lot of momentum and is considered the boogeyman of the division, or Crawford is considered pound for pound number one. So let's not play games here. And that's why there's, that's why I say everything's kind of closing in on Keith Thurman. Because he's already admitted that he knows that people, he says, y'all keep asking me about this Errol Spence. He's a good fighter and stuff. So you've already admitted and acknowledged that the fans are, are on your line about fighting Errol Spence Jr. And again, you get all the credit. I don't think a Porter fight or Danny Garcia at the Barclays would be massively bigger than Errol Spence, especially if Spence beats Lamont Peterson. You know what I mean? Uh, Spence has fought in New York a couple times. Leonard Bundu, Chris Algieri. So if he gets past Lamont Peterson, put that shit right at the Barclays, like they've been putting a lot of big fights, and boom, boom, boom. <clears throat> so, I mean, we know what it is. And I just like... I just wish boxing and fans and promoters and all this shit, I wish they were honest. Like, if, if, just say what it is, you know what I'm saying? If you don't want to fight Spence for some other reason, like, oh, I would, res honestly, I'm not even lying. I would respect it if, if Keith Thurman said, hey, I'm coming, I just got married, coming off an injury. I want two or three fights because I know Spence is probably my most difficult fight. I would respect that. <clears throat> I would respect it more than, oh, yeah, the fans want it, but the fight's not big as it's got, like, you know what I mean? Because that I don't believe that. If you just said, hey, this is my most difficult fight, I could beat the dude, but let's build up to it. Then I wouldn't have no, I wouldn't have as much of a problem with it. You know what I mean? But what happens in boxing is that pride. You get that, that heart beating and stuff, and then people will say, like, kind of like downplay a guy. <clears throat> like, oh, I'll knock him out. Or he's cool, but he all right. I mean, if he's all right, then fight him right now. That's how I look at it. But, I mean, it, uh, Keith Thurman, he's, he's been kind of fair to Spence. He, he hasn't really, like, flamed him. But he's but this is what I'm saying. Like, he do, has done interviews where Keith Thurman has said stuff like, oh, he's never faced a fighter like me. Okay, if he's never faced a fighter, then, then y'all should fight. Because he won't know what to do, according to you. He said he never faced a fighter as good or as awkward as me. That might be true. Let's see it, though. You know what I mean? 
crazy. Yeah, but listen, we got to get past it. In my box, someone said Terrence Crawford versus Spence is a good fight. I agree. But it's bullshit to expect Terrence Crawford, even though he probably wants it. I'm saying from my perspective, it's bullshit for Keith Thurman and Errol Spence has been a thing for longer. Floyd Mayweather mentioned it years ago, and it never happened. So it's bullshit for Crawford to come into the division, fight Jeff Horn, and be fighting Errol Spence before Keith Thurman and Errol Spence fight. That's BS, because he's he's new to the division. Why should he have to? Like It's just like Lamont Peterson. Peterson is showing a ton of heart by fighting a guy that most welterweights don't want to fight, or they're not acting like they want to fight him. Peterson has like one, one and a half welterweight fights. The Danny Garcia and Felix Diaz, those are catchweight fights. So I guess that can count as like one welterweight fight because they weren't at the full 47. And then he fought David Avenesia. And then this is the man that's having to fight one of the most dangerous welterweights because he stepped up to the plate. So that's bullshit that Terrence Crawford has to fight Spence before the guy who's who's been a champion longer than Spence in that division and has fought as high as 153 and got a knockout against Carlos Quintana. So me personally, I'd rather see Terrence Crawford fight Jeff Horn, um, take whatever in between fights, Danny Garcia, Rios winner or some shit, those types of things. Spence and Thurman fight. And then by that time, Keith Thurman, Spence winner could fight Terrence Crawford. But I know Spence, I mean, Crawford probably don't care. But I'm just saying, we got to get past that. Like, we got guys moving up from 42 welterweight and they bout about it. Lamont Peterson, Terrence Crawford. So... Guys who have been a welterweight longer, they should be duking it out before these new dudes. I don't really do pound for pound. Like I said, it, it would it's just not worth my time, to be honest. I got a lot of stuff with my time, and that's one thing that's not worth it. But it's usually pretty easy to recognize the number one person. Number one is Terrence Crawford. It was Andre Ward. He retired. Crawford slid from number two to number one. So that's all that matters. Because everything beyond number one is is even more <clears throat> speculation. Usually the person in the number one spot has created some type of separation. You know what I mean? To the point where you can make a more sound argument. Lomachenko's good, but he's not number one. Period. Here, we might get a hot seat. Hit the like button if you want me to expose the game and get that hot seat cracking. I feel like I feel like warming it up. And I know this Lomachenko topic is gonna warm it up for y'all. Let's get it, man. Hit that like button. I'm about to expose the game. I dare someone to step in my realm, that hot seat realm. Let's go, man. We gladiators. Listen. And see, I'm going to tell y'all, man. The difference between me and them, what I mean by them, old media, a lot of these other channels and shit, they're not willing to do what I'm doing. And that's show y'all what the fuck I'm talking about. It's not just opinion-based over here. I can, I can give you a paper trail. And that's always going to be more important than other shit. You know what I'm saying? I can show you where where it makes sense and where I get my information and different shit I've seen. Alright, listen. Y'all ready for that work? Y'all ain't engaged enough for this. You know what? I'm not even going to talk about this now. I need more engagement. We got over 100 people in here and we don't have a hundred likes. So I'm gonna I'm save this category until I see more engagement from y'all. Because if the engagement's not there, then I'm not gonna keep going over this stuff. Like I told y'all, y'all work for me, I work for y'all. It's like a commission. Mayweather shouldn't come back. Y'all wanted him gone, I agree.
Oh, we got shout out to 89 Till Reyes. He says, I want to see Loma fight against top level Mexican fighter style Vargas Berchel. We're going to talk about that because that's actually what this has to do with. Can we get some more engagement? If y'all want to hear this, put a hell yeah. I need to see that you guys are in, in here involved, not driving, paying attention. Because once I go over this and once we get a hot seat, I want everyone to know what we're talking about, all the rules and everything like that. And I'm going to expose the game and I'm going to show y'all exactly what the fuck I'm talking about. Okay, now I see some engagement in the comment section. All right, so I'm going to show you this source, how you guys can... Once again, I give you guys a paper trail. Oh, new media. That's bullshit. Bunch of frauds. But why am I giving you guys the information? You know what I mean? Why am I giving the information on how to to reach the, the same... If you, you know what I'm saying? If you want the same information that i seen, I'm telling you how to get to it. You feel me? So... Let's get it, man. Yeah, we got the engagement up. I got some hell yes. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to get there first. Okay, Bob Arum did an interview with Fight Hub. Check them out. 69 likes, 64 dislikes. Bob Arum on Lomachenko versus Mikey Garcia. Mikey Garcia will probably quit. And there's Bob Arum. Right? So Mikey's gonna quit. This is what I'm talking about. Everyone gets mad at me. Listen, I could understand if I was making shit up and then as a result, I was just running with it. I'm quoting the fighters, the trainers, their team, their promoters, and I'm telling you and showing you what they are saying. So my thing is this. I feel Vasil Lomachenko versus Mikey Garcia. If we are going to hold, and I told you, this is where the media does not do Lomachenko's service. Because instead of just letting him prove his greatness, they want to prematurely say he's pound for pound number one, like they did Chocolatito. He's skilled, but to say he's better than all these other people with three times as many fights and undisputed and Golovkin undefeated and whoever else, Canelo, better resume than Lomachenko. They want to throw Lomachenko up there. So don't be mad when people like me are checking for that. He's better than Ali. He can beat Floyd. He can beat Pat. Okay. Now I got to see what he's made of. You know what I mean? I already know he's good, but you are the reason. If you want to expedite him on these pound for pound lists and things like that and trump him over people, get it, Trump? Sounds like some shit he would do. But And you want to put him over people who, in my opinion, have earned it more and have, there's more data we can collect on them, right? Then that's fine. Okay, fine. Cool. We'll play by your rules. But you can't be saying stuff like, Mikey will quit. Mikey Garcia will quit versus Lomachenko and me not want to see that. That's a good-ass fight. Everyone keeps listening. They get mad at me. Oh, you're protecting Gervonta Davis. No, I'm not protecting him. If he wants to fight Lomachenko and they make a fight, cool. But he doesn't have a belt and he's not ranked with the WBO. Meanwhile, Lomachenko called out Mikey Garcia and his own promoter saying Mikey will probably quit. So that fight to me, this would this would push the needle as of right now in the right direction to prove his legitimacy, right? Prove his legitimacy more than a current Tank Davis fight does. I don't care who gets mad, but that's... That's how I feel. I feel right now, if Mikey Garcia gets past Sergey Lipinitz, becomes a champion in two weight divisions simultaneously, stays undefeated, then that fight has more, um, more at stake to the point where Lomachenko would get more credit for beating Mikey Garcia. <clears throat> if he beats the current Gervonta Tank Davis, That'll be cool to be a other name in his division, but it'll also be a beltless guy. Whereas Mikey has two belts and two weight divisions if he gets past Sergey Lipinitz. And he's Lomachenko size, if not bigger. I'm pretty sure Loma's probably taller than Tank. And Tank's coming off of a performance that wasn't that great. If Mikey beats Sergey Lipinitz, that'll be beating a fresh champion at 140, a weight class that's not even his permanent home. 
beating Broner in a dominant fashion. I was there in New York and then knocking out a champion at 135, Dejan and with a 91% knockout ratio. So yes, the implications for beating Mikey Garcia would do a lot better to prove where Lomachenko really should be in terms of pound for pound. If you make Mikey Garcia quit, that proves more to me even though he doesn't have two Olympic gold medals, then a guy coming up two weight class with two gold medals. Because we know when two great fighters fight, but one has a weight, a big weight disparity, then, you know what I mean, things things could favor the guy who's skilled, skilled, but less, less in terms of size, mass, right? It's just what it is. So you guys can, oh, Tank. Yeah, what about Mikey, though? That's what I want to see, especially you saying he'll quit. You know what I mean? And seeing the other big difference, new media style. This is what they try to this is what they try to bamboozle you with. Mikey is obliging him and his team, Lomachenko. Mikey, I have several videos. He said, I'll be your Huckleberry, which is a direct quote from one of my favorite movies, Tombstone, with Val Kilmer, who had a raw ass character, Doc Holliday. Meaning, like, I'll be your, you know what I'm saying? Like I, like I'll step up. Let's go. Let's have a old old Wild West showdown, and see who's the best gunslinger. Robert Garcia, trainer and brother of Mikey Garcia, said, "Oh, Mikey, I think Mikey's too big. Mikey's too big for you know what I'm saying." So he's down for the fight. But from Mayweather, Leonard Ellerby, and Tank, I haven't really seen them oblige and say like, "Yeah." This is, what, this is the direction we're looking for. So why keep picking on the person that doesn't look like they're trying to fight you, that probably wants to get their belt back and go their own path and then meet with you and down the down the stretch? You know what I'm saying? Versus a guy who, again, if he beats Sergey Lippin, it's two belts and two divisions. You guys can get mad if you want. But again, look at this video. Bob Arum on Lomachenko versus Garcia. Mikey will probably quit. Now... Mikey was Bob Arum's old fighter, right? He's his old fighter, and he's saying this about him. So it's already a backstory. Mikey Garcia was the Lomachenko for top rank at a point in time. You know what I mean? Because I think Donaire had lost to Pacquiao. You know what I mean? He got knocked out and all types of shit. Then Donaire had lost to Rigondeau. So, you know what I mean? It was like kind of like Mikey was the superstar who was still undefeated. Now that he's left and he's on the other side with Showtime, Bob Arum has all this stuff to say. <clears throat> Mikey is a terrific fighter. He's a terrific fighter. But Lomachenko will make him quit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Let me see Mikey quit. Let me see Robert Easter Jr. quit. Let me see Jorge Linares quit. Let me see Miguel Berchel quit. It's simple. That's proof of Mikey Garcia is a terrific fighter. Like, oh, I get it. He's a terrific fighter. I agree. Let's see this shit. Because, and see, this is the thing. It's not about just see, some of y'all fucking emotional man fans. That's what we call them. You're a fan of a man. You're a man fan. A lot of you emotional fucking man fans, this is what you do. You're a fan of a man. So you get mad at people like me talking about, oh, you just want to see Lomachenko, you want to see my baby Lomachenko lose. It's not about wanting to see him lose. I want to see him tested against a good style that would give him credit if he wins or if he loses, then he loses. It's not, you know what I'm saying? Like, what are you talking about? It's not about him losing. There's no guarantee that he would lose to Mikey Garcia. However, I can make an argument on Mikey Garcia does this better. He has this strength. Lomachenko has this strength and does this better. You know what I mean? Okay, foot speed, clearly Lomachenko. Amateur pedigree, Lomachenko, right? Probably overall speed, Lomachenko. But Mikey Garcia, size advantage, power advantage. He does have ring IQ. They're both, actually, he's undefeated and Lomachenko ain't undefeated. So it is that simple. Is that simple? It's not. You see, that's how I know when the when it's when we're dealing with man fans. Shout out to Poland. We're dealing with man fans. They talking about you just want to see Loma lose. You must not have faith in Lomachenko. You say he's better than Muhammad Ali, but then I name a good fight and you say no. You just want to see him lose. Why should he have to 
go up and wait. And see, I'm telling you, Abel Sanchez does this for Golovkin. Freddie Roach does this with fucking every fighter he has, from Miguel Cotto to Pacquiao. And Bob Arum and Team Lomachenko are doing this for Lomachenko. What this is, what I am referring to, is they talk up their fighter, which is fine, promote them, which is fine. But sometimes they go above and beyond to the point where people were like, okay, let me see that. You know what I mean? Freddie Roach would say something. I guarantee that. My my guy, Miguel Cotto, he's going to knock out Canelo in three rounds. Like I'm like, okay, he's going to knock out Canelo. You bet in your house. Let me see that. And then it doesn't happen. Abel Sanchez, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no guy from 154 to 168 goes 12 with Golovkin. Like, okay. But his last two opponents went 12 rounds with them. You know what I'm saying? Like, Canelo and Jacobs, who's been stopped, went 12 rounds with them. So you said all that. And the same thing, Bob Arum, Mikey, he's a terrific fighter. He'll probably quit. Let me see. Let me see him quit. Don't tell me that to why should he move up five pounds? You just said he can move up five pounds and make the motherfucker quit. So why is it my fault that I want to see that? And if he does it, he'll get props. It's simple. And again, it proves more than if he were to fight certain people at this current juncture. <clears throat> now, you notice the cowards aren't coming out, the hot seat. So don't don't be fooled. Like I said, like Pac said. Like the Judas did to Jesus. They're only here to cause distraction. Don't be confused by dislikes and stuff. Where are those people that could step up and counter what I'm saying? We could do the hot seat right now. But they're cowards. They're not going to step up. I'm asking them to step up. But anyway, um, here's the kicker. I'm going to show you all again. On this Fight Hub interview... With Bob Arum, he says Mikey will quit. I'm going to read the direct quote. I wrote it down. I'm going to read the direct quote. Hopefully, Lomachenko versus Mikey Garcia will be made. You got to pay these guys a lot of money because they're not stupid. They're great fighters, which sounds funny because Rigondeau and Walters didn't get paid shit. But he knows Mikey Garcia is not stupid and he's been around the game and was formerly signed to top rank. So of course he's gonna say, these guys want a lot of money, they're not stupid, because he knows Mikey's not stupid. And the game goofy and gonna just accept 400,000 or 300,000 for a big fight. Garcia is a great fighter. Jorge Linares is a great fighter. But ask them deep down, do they have a chance with this guy? They'll tell you no. I totally disagree with that. I don't think Mikey Garcia is selling wolf tickets. I don't think most fighters, whether they can do it or not, I don't think most fighters, like, are, are feeling like, oh, I'm going to get my ass whipped by this dude. You know what I mean? Even if it looked like they were ducking, they're fighters. You know what I mean? So I don't think Mikey and Jorge really think deep down inside they can't beat Lomachenko. Right? Bob Aram says, I think right now, listen, listen. Now we're going to get somewhere, people. This is what I'm telling you about top rank matchmaking. Y'all don't have to take my word for it. Go watch the interview. Now, listen. Shout out to my dude, AK. He's with This Is 50, the sweet scientist, him and, him and Barack. He asked Bob Arum a very good question here. And he, he planted it in, and Bob Arum's on the spot, so he has to answer it. He says, like, basically, I don't remember how he worded it. He basically said, you say... Lomachenko is, is the best pound for pound, better than Ali and stuff like that. So he is like, what about Lomachenko versus Terrence Crawford? He uh, he just moved from 140. I mean, how far can is Lomachenko willing to go up to, to prove his greatness? He said something like that. And then this is what Bob Arum says. I think right now Lomachenko is filling his way up. You have to understand what a great professional he is. I think he was going to fight Orlando Salido in a rematch, and Salido pulled out. So we then had to get an opponent, right? Listen to this. We had Ray Beltran also on that same card. So we, we said, hey, Lomachenko, you should fight Ray Beltran at 135. Lomachenko said, no, I'm preparing to fight at 130 pounds. You want me to fight Ray Beltran? Give me notice, and I'll fight him at 135. Bob Arum says, you're not dealing with a regular fighter. You're dealing with a guy who's almost like a scientist. 
when it comes to boxing. So first of all, promoter tricks. You didn't even say in that whole spiel, you didn't say anything about Crawford. <laughs> the question was like, hey, could he fight Crawford? And you didn't even address Crawford. Second thing, Bob Arum is on record saying that Terrence Crawford and Lomachenko, he doesn't know who to place at number one, right? He said he doesn't know who's number one, basically. It's, it's really tough. But you have both fighters. Why not make that fight? See, this is what I'm saying. If he's better than Ali, then he should be able to beat Terrence Crawford when he's at 140. Especially since they said Bud ain't fought nobody. And especially since he himself said he wants to fight Terrence Crawford. He said he would love to fight Crawford. Lomachenko did. Go do your research. Right? But no, we can't get that. We can't get that at all. Okay, fine. Crawford's moving up to 47. Doesn't look like Lomachenko's moving to 35. And definitely not 140. Okay, fine. Bob Arum said out of his own fucking mouth that Ray Beltran was on the same card. A guy, mind you, who's been beat by Crawford and others. You know I me, mean? Ricky Burns, he, he actually should have won that fight. But he has multiple losses. Former sp sparring partner Pacquiao. Um, and he, he admits Lomachenko turned the fight down because it was at a different weight that he wasn't preparing for. Now, the sensible me, I'm like, okay, I understand that. You weren't really preparing to fight a guy at 35. But also, your team's putting this immense amount of pressure on you. Ray Beltran has knocked out some guys brutally in his last couple of fights. From a skill perspective, Loma all day. But I would love to see Ray Beltran at 35 versus Lomachenko. You know what I mean? Because Ray Beltran, I know, has cracks. He's Mexican. You know what I mean? We know the one style that has been known to defeat Lomachenko is also a style that he doesn't fight. You know what I'm saying? That he hasn't fought since Salido. So Ray Beltran would have been a great opportunity. And Ray Beltran's not even considered the number top three guys at 135. So why can't Lomachenko take that? Bob Arum is telling you this. The interview's up. I just showed you how to get to it. But Lomachenko can't do the risk. Lomachenko just fought Rigado, who who had three fights in three years. His last fight with Chucky Moises Flores, I was there. It was on the Ward Kovalev 2 undercard. It, it went one round, right? It went one round. So he didn't even really have many rounds. Then before, I think he fought Jazza Dickens. And I think that went two rounds, right? And he still, he moved up to two weight classes or whatever. But then that's what I'm saying. It's like Lomachenko, I understand Bob Marin saying, oh, he's a scientist. But your team is not talking like scientists. You're saying he's better than Ali and he can wax Floyd at 130. Why can't you fight Ray Beltran, a guy we've seen Crawford beat? I was at that fight. I was at Ray Beltran. I covered it as media. <coughs> Crawford versus Beltran. Make Beltran quit. Beltran has a lot of power. So if you don't fight him the right way, I was at, man, listen, they put Beltran on the, um, he was on the Crawford Molina card. I covered that too. Right? Ray Beltran, there was an undefeated guy who was supposed to be like, you know, an up and coming hot shot. Ray Beltran knocked him the fuck out. It was competitive. And then out of nowhere, he just got knocked the fuck out. Ray Beltran knocked him, stretched him. I forgot the dude's name. I could look it up easily. But it was on December 10th on the Crawford John Molina card. And then Ray Beltran fought somebody else after that. Another ranked guy stretched him. And the guy had like a seizure on the ground. And he sparred with Pacquiao. So, again, stylistically, that's a good fight. Listen, I'm dropping gems. We got to get the likes up. We have almost 200 people in the stream. Smash the like button. Then you can resume commenting. But that's the only way these streams are going long. If not, if the engagement's not there, then I can't be here doing long streams because it has to, you have to make it worth my time to not, to put away the other stuff that I have to do. You know what I'm saying? So smash the like button. But anyway, Ray Beltran would have been a solid fight. Not even, you know what I mean? Not even, I don't think Ray Beltran's as smart as Mikey Garcia, but they have common denominators. They both spar with Pacquiao and they both have power and it's both at 135. You know what I'm saying? So Ray Beltran is a rough fight if you don't 
fight him right. You know what I'm saying? Actually, most of his losses, Sharif Brogare and all these Ricky Burns, some of those could have, except for Crawford, some of them could have went, you know what I'm saying, could have went either way. But that's what I'm saying. Lomachenko, him and his team said no. You turn right now, Ray Beltran. But that's that's what I'm saying. That with the media pressure, you say he's better than Ali. But <clears throat> when Salido pulled out, they gave you basically a Salido style at five pounds heavier with Ray Beltran, a guy with multiple losses. And you said no, give me time for Ray Beltran. But why? You you the Matrix, Matrix Ray Beltran, and make him quit. That's what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? It's like you, you keep saying Lomachenko is the Matrix and high tech and it'll make everyone quit. But we can't even see Lomachenko versus Ray Beltran. Okay, fuck Mikey Garcia at 35, right? Fuck, fuck those fights. Okay, fuck uh, Crawford. But we can't see Ray Beltran, the guy Crawford beat. Crazy. I think right now Lomachenko's feeling his way up. He was gonna fight Salido in a rematch, and Salido pulled out. So then we had to get an opponent, and we had Ray Beltran on the card. So we said, fight Beltran at 35. He said, no, I'm preparing to fight at 130. You want me to fight Beltran, give me notice and I'll fight him at 135. But again, if you make people like Ray Beltran quit, then to me, that shows, uh, you can say whatever about his record, that's gonna show me something, because <laughs> Ray Beltran is not no slouch. And again, he's closer to the style that has beaten him. So that will show me the progress of Lomachenko's brain. <coughs> right? And he has like, look. Thirty-six from Mexico, like I said, he's five eight, so he's an inch taller than Lomachenko. Decent reach. He's he has more knockout power than than his record would indicate. You know what I'm saying? He has forty something fights. He has momentum. See, y'all keep talking this tank shit. This is the guy, Brian Vasquez. No, no, no. Jonathan Massiello. Knocked him out in the second round, brutally. And Mason Menard, that's the one on the Crawford. Knocked him out brutally in the seventh. You know what I'm saying? Spar with Pacquiao. All that. So that's what I'm saying, why there's so much pressure on Lomachenko. Nah, he's Mexican, he's not Puerto Rican. Um, that's what I'm saying, that's why the media, ESPN, they're putting pressure on him. Because, like I said, you saying everyone would quit. I don't believe that. I don't believe Beltran would quit. Even if you beat him, I don't think you're gonna beat him like, like you did Rigganow. Because it's 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 a different, it's a different challenge. Rigganow has power, but his power had only been proven at 122. Um, Beltran has not. Look, Beltran, he won. I don't even know what this is. Oh, this is an upcoming fight. So in this last fight, majority decision. So one, two, three, four, five. Look how many knockouts he had. He had one, two, three, four, five. Four knockouts in his last five, five fights. And Lomachenko turned him down. Beltran can handle Pacquiao's punches. Beltran would eat his punches like Tic Tacs. Belchin would bum rush Lomachenko. See, and that's what I'm saying. Like, listen, I know how, how great Terrence Crawford is as a fighter, right? And I was at the Beltran fight. Beltran made Crawford work. He did. And his Crawford used a lot more movement in that fight than maybe he did in some other fights. You know what I mean? So that's what I want from top ranking Team Lomachenko. Fight the fights that we know are gonna show your growth. That's it. You beat Mikey Garcia, make him quit. Jorge Linares, Robert Easter, Ray Beltran. 
Miguel Bertrand, make any of them guys quit. That's like that's a step in the right direction. It's crazy, man. And, and I'm telling you, man, you got and see. I think Top Rank knows this. Yeah, Gary Russell's trying to get that rematch. See, that's what I'm saying. Like, get if if you're gonna listen, it's just top rank matchmaking. I'm telling you, if you were gonna move up Miguel Mariaga off of a loss, I'd rather see Gary Russell Jr. off of wins ever since he lost to Lomachenko move up because he's at least a champion at 126 and he looks like the best guy at 126 and he looked like he's improved since his Lomachenko loss, just like Lomachenko has improved. So that's what I'm saying. You can say, oh, he already beat him. Why should he have to fight? Why fight Miguel Mariaga? He was coming off a loss to Oscar Valdez, and Nicholas Walters had already beat him. Who wants the hot seat? If Loma and Pacquiao are signed to top rank, why not make them fight each other? I don't know. I mean, Pacquiao, he's not no pushover either. He, he's not a pushover either. I don't know what weight Pacquiao can make. And, and but see, even even this, listen, why not fight Pacquiao when he you know what I mean before he lost his belt to Jeff Horn? That's the same thing with Tank Davis. Like, you know what I mean? It's still a Pacquiao fight, you're gonna get credit. But let's see Lomachenko fight some guy with very strong momentum. All right, we got a hot seat. His name is Puerto Rican black man. Well, you're, you're a Puerto Rican black man. You you in the hot seat. He says Madiaga was a short notice replacement. You acting like he planned way in advance to fight Miguel Madiaga. Okay, so how is it short notice? And we gonna, we gonna see how much you know, Puerto Rican black man. How, how was that short notice? Where's the Puerto Rican black man? Where he at? <coughs> Where's the Puerto Rican? Because they had a set date in the fight, Salido pulled out because of a hand injury. Everybody type, you know you done fucked up. You know you done fucked up, right? You know you done fucked up, right? See, I don't know where you get your information from, but I do know, you know, you done fucked up. You done fucked up, right? So he says he's in the hot seat and he says something about Salido and a hand injury. And this was a late replacement. ESPN, Vasil Lomachenko, Terrence Crawford. Vasil Lomachenko, Terrence Crawford to headline live ESPN cards in August. And this was published January 30th. So, somebody tell me what, what month comes after June. Somebody tell me, you know you done fucked up. What month comes after June? What month comes after June? Does anybody know, like, have a calendar? What month comes after June? June, July, and then August. Keep in mind, if Dan Rayfield and ESPN are typing an article on, on June 30th and it's published, then Lomachenko knew who he was fighting. They, they don't, top rank doesn't give ESPN the information before the negotiation. So clearly Team Madiaga and Team Lomachenko knew who they were fighting, just like most of the time. Like Wilder knows he's fighting Luis Ortiz, most likely. It just hasn't been made public it hasn't been made a public issue but if they negotiate behind closed doors then they know who they're fighting so where's this late notice when there's an article from june and the fight wasn't until august and again that's when the article was published not including when they negotiated when the contracts were signed which had to be before the date the art art article was published Man, get this, get this black man Puerto Rican out of here. Let's vote. Is that he? He's blaming on Salido 
and saying Mariaga was like a late replacement. A late replacement, and it really wasn't. Put your L's up, I just showed you. Because they were negotiating with Salido and everything, he claimed hand injury. Salido don't matter because no matter what happened with Salido being injured, this was still agreed upon. The ESPN deal was set in place. And I'm showing you as far as June, and the fight wasn't until August. So that's not really late replacement, even if the negotiations with Salido failed. Man, get this boy out of here. One of my mods, light him up. Flame this boy. No one else is going to step up. Now you're making up shit. You don't know who. Gary Russell said, I'll fight him at any weight. Did they contact Gary Russell? Hey, listen, we're having a candlelight vigil for you, Puerto Rican black man. Everybody put your lighters up. Everybody say a prayer. Close your eyes. Shout out to St. Mary. He got burned in the hot seat. We're going to put our candles up for you, man. Hey, get him out of my stream. One of my mods, St. Mary, don't want him here anymore. Put your lighters up. Another one bites the dust. <coughs> we having a candlelight vigil. See you at the crossroads. And I gotta miss everybody. Y'all think y'all can fuck with me? Once again, I might have to just do do the whole stream with this. Right? Now he... You see how their argument changed? At first he said it, it was a late replacement, Mariaga, when I showed you that a deal was in place at least at in June. So Orlando Salido don't have nothing to do with it, even if they negotiated with him and the fight fell apart. So that's that. A late replacement is Joshua Kubrat Pulev. Pulev pulled out literally a week before the fight and Carlos Tackham stepped in. That's a late replacement. That makes no sense, Ego. Okay, AKA step in the hot seat. What doesn't make sense? You take his place. We got another hot seat. AKA, what doesn't make sense? Please tell us. Okay, you said you just said. Okay, what did I say that didn't make sense? You said Salido doesn't matter. I'm saying a failed negotiation with Orlando Salido doesn't matter. Are you guys like remedial? Are some of you guys like, are you guys slow? Cause I'm sure there's like boxing courses that you guys can take to help you out. Oh my gosh, listen. I'm saying Salido, even if Lomachenko's team was negotiating with Salido and he pulled out because he was injured, he pulled out within enough time where they got Mariaga and it wasn't a late replacement because if it was a late replacement it would have happened there wouldn't be an article talking about Lomachenko fighting in August in June on ESPN what don't you understand what, what doesn't make sense again Kubrat Pulev was supposed to fight Anthony Joshua he was supposed to fight Anthony Joshua a week before the fight was to, to happen in Wales he said oh I'm injured that's a late replacement. Conor McGregor versus Nate Diaz. That's a Nate Diaz had 10 or 11 days to get in shape and be ready. He says, I get you. Sorry. All right. He waved the white flag, but you're still getting put in timeout for interrupting. So he's not getting blocked. I put him in timeout because he was clearly wrong. All I'm saying, like, you guys got to pay attention to what's being said. I'm saying the Salido negotiations didn't matter because it was it was already a known thing that Salido wasn't any longer in the running and they were able to get a replacement in June. So Lomachenko fighting all the way in August, that's not a late replacement. Late replacement, like I said, is Nate Diaz having 11 days, Chad Mendez versus Conor McGregor having like a week to get ready. Uh, Luis Ortiz versus Wilder, I think that was pretty late that remains to burn, but he was already on the car training, so. All right, legendary saying Goku. Wilder is nothing but a bum. You're in the hot seat. We'll see who the bum is. Why is he nothing but a bum? 
And what's a better fight for Joshua? Name three better fights than Wilder. Come on, Goku. Let's see if you go Super Saiyan on me. He's looking for attention. He got it. All right, you have 15 seconds. 12. 10. 8. 5. 1. Eh, eh. What do you have to say? Because I seen you were putting all these messages promptly. Now that your ass in the hot seat is taking forever. Okay, so you ain't Super Saiyan? You were just looking for attention? Well, you found it. Block L. <coughs> who next? I want who next. Easy caskets, man. Nah, he didn't respond quick enough. Fuck him. He was responding quick, very quick, and then I put him in the hot seat and it took forever and he got counted out. And then I, I didn't see a response. So that's his bad. You know what I mean? Like I said, you guys will learn with the hot seat. Much easier to just say whatever you want to say without backing it up than it is to to perform. Like me, like I could say, oh, I'll fuck Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant up in their prime. It's much e it's much easier for me to say I'll beat Mikey Jordan. I mean Mikey Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant one on one than it is for me to prove it. Ego, are you cross-eyed? No, but you're blocked. Blocked. Come get these bodies. 2018. <laughs> we gonna have a graveyard so gruesome gaming get your gruesome ass out of here even like li once again why do dudes care ego are you cross-eyed even if i was cross-eyed why do you care you're a dude i mean y'all know i ain't cross-eyed but even if i was you're a dude why, why does that pertain what does that affect what that's what i'm saying they're only here to cause distractions what I miss, you two messing up. Oh, you! I just got three bodies back to back. Kill streak. Shout out to Howlin' Future, two dollar money gang super chat. Uh, <clears throat> Let's get it, man. 2018. We're just gonna keep picking up, rolling out the bodies. You know how it is. Tank is the most respectable fight for Loma at 130. So the most respectable fight at Lomachenko of his career at 130 is to fight a guy without a belt coming off a of bad performance. Seems legit. <clears throat> so once again, it's like, this is what they do with their favorite fighters. They always want the path of least resistance. They have no problem saying he's greater than Ali, he'll beat Floyd's ass, and he'll wax Pacquiao, all that. But then when, when people want to see that person tested, then all of a sudden, it's like you want him to go the past the least resistant. Once again, get the hate about your heart. Just admit that you want to see Lomachenko versus Tank because you, you don't think Tank has much of a chance to beat him. Because that's what they say in the conversation. Oh, Lomachenko, he'll beat Tank's ass. Tank is not ready. Tank, Tank, Tank. Tank, he's he can't even make way. Tank this. Tank, look, if he fights like he fought Fonseca, he'll get beat. So you just admitted and acknowledged all these things that you feel but then that's the fight you're saying would give Lomachenko his stripes. But you just threw Tank, Tank Davis's name through the mud. I, in fact, think Tank could give Lomachenko a good fight. Can he beat him? I don't know. Well, I think Tank could give him a, a hell of a fight, to be honest. But again, the timing, you probably have to make it make sense. He could get a fight the Japanese dude, get his old belt back, get some things situated in his camp. So, you know what I mean? It's crazy. So, once again, and you know what the funny thing is? Let it be a fighter they don't like. Let's say Floyd Mayweather. He beats Pacquiao in the same year, his final fight to close his contract, he decides to fight Andre Berto, a two time former world champion, right? Who's bigger than Floyd, has speed, power, youthful, you're more youthful than Floyd. <coughs> What do they say? Oh, Floyd's the biggest cherry picker. He fights people he knows he can win. So what is what does Lomachenko do? If Lomachenko's up here in your rating, number one pound for pound, and he's fighting a guy coming off a bad performance with no belt, is that is that not fighting somebody? 
Is that not fighting somebody he knows he can beat or feels he has a strong chance to beat? <clears throat> so you guys, you make it worse for yourself. They always say Floyd is is cherry picking and picking guys he feels he can beat, but then you support Lomachenko targeting more so than other people that'll probably be fights that, as of right now, will give him more credentials. Yo, Tank's a big name. Yeah, but Tank's not gonna give him the same notoriety at this point. At this point, at age 23, no belt, and coming off of the Fonseca performance and not being able to make weight, off of that performance, it's not gonna give him more uh, stripes or more, um, it's not gonna put the world on notice as much as if he were to beat like a Mikey Garcia. But again, I'm biased or whatever y'all wanna say, but this is what they protect the, the number one pound for pound fighter from. You know what I mean? He's better than Ali, but we can't see better than Ali type of uh, schedule. Loma got a decent resume, but he catches guys on the decline. That's why he won tank right now. See, that's what I'm saying. Like, why not fight? There's there's other... That's cool. You, I don't have any problem with him calling him out initially. But his team says they have other plans, and you keep pushing this envelope. For, why not fight Ray Beltran? You could have took that on short notice, took the risk, beat him. And Ray Beltran, if you're, if you're, if you're really... If you're skilled, more skilled than Floyd Mayweather, Ray Beltran should be, and you're better than Terrence Crawford because they have you at number one pound for pound, you should be able to beat Ray Beltran easy. You know what I mean? Even if it's short notice or not. You know what I'm saying? You should be able to beat him if you are what they say you are. But to me, that shows me that probably Lomachenko's team is realistic and they know Ray Beltran is a sleeper type of person where he has a lot of power and you would want to train for him. Which is, is, is fair. That's fair. I'm not mad at Lomachenko for him and his team being realistic. Cause I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't want to sleep on uh, Ray Beltran. You know what I mean? But again, it doesn't co the the bulk of this is doesn't coincide with what old media is telling us. If Lomachenko gives Floyd Mayweather hell and or beats Floyd Mayweather when he was Pretty Boy Floyd, then why can't you fight Ray Beltran? on a shorter notice. And I just showed you the shorter notice was still a month and a half at least, at least a month and a half before the actual fight. So that's not enough time for you to cut less weight. Lomachenko looks pretty big. Crazy. So like I said, if you could beat Pretty Boy Floyd, what's Ray Beltran? Floyd, if you're better than Terrence Crawford, Crawford already beat Beltran. So you would just be fighting his quote unquote leftovers. I know a lot of boxing fans say that, but you know what I mean? You would just be fighting a guy he already beat convincingly. I was at the fight, right? But you need more time to prepare for him, but you can beat Pretty Boy Floyd. Crazy. Um, Crawford versus Horn. Does Horn get stopped? I don't know. I could see him getting TKO'd maybe. I don't know if he I don't know if Crawford will knock him out cold, but it could be just like later in the fight where Horn's just getting beat up, bloody, cut and discouraged and shit, and he gets stopped that way. I could see something like that. Or a decision. I mean Horn's Horn's pretty durable, so either way I don't see Horn winning. Put it that way. <coughs> Eagles High Seed Demolition Man TV show. Damn, I'm possessed. Wonder if I could play the accordion too. Simon says, bleed. How did you know the password to the cuffs? I wish I knew. Simon says, bleed. Do you have anything fresh to say on your behalf? Yeah, I do. Teddy bear. Um. All right, and Antifa US, you in the hot seat. Let's go. Antifa hot seat. He says Terrence Crawford fights bums. So who's your number one pound for pound person? Who is your number? You're in the hot seat. 
Crawford fights bums, cool. Who do you have in your number one pound for pound spot since Crawford fights bums? Where is he at, man? Okay, so here, now we have a hot seat. Lomachenko's number one pound for pound to him, but Crawford fights bums. So let's play a little game and see who runs out quicker. I'll name a solid opponent, and then you tell me someone Lomachenko fought that had more momentum, that is way stronger of a resume, and way better than that opponent. Like not even on that Crawford opponent's level because they're so much higher. Fair? Cool. And we'll see who runs out first. We'll go back and forth. Okay, Yuri Yorkis Gamboa, Crawford fought Gamboa when he was undefeated, right? And he's an Olympic gold medalist. Who has Lomachenko fought that was, like I said, like undefeated, gold medalist, and you would rate him over Gamboa that high, right? We'll see who runs out first. He says only Rigandow. And this was a guy coming up two weight classes. Okay, fine. So next person. Victor Postal was coming off the Lucas Matisse, the Lucas Matisse win, and he has stopped Lucas, the only one out of Devin Alexander, Zab Judah, Danny Garcia, John Molina, all these guys that stopped Lucas Matisse, and he was a champion. Victor Postal also beat like Selchuk Iden, former champion, and guys like that. I think Jesus Soto Carras and um, Hank Lundy, right? Crawford unified with him. So, name somebody that would, that Lomachenko fought that you would say is significantly better than Victor Postal. High, and look at differences too, like how Postal had a height advantage over Crawford, probably had a reach advantage, stuff like that. So who had those types of advantages coming off a good performance, champion, height advantage, stuff like that. <coughs> And the rule is you can't use the same opponent twice because you said Crawford fights bums, so you can't say Rigo Rigo. It has to be a fresh opponent that Cro that Lomachenko has faced. Hey, this Ron Roa, one of my mods block him. The fans are complaining about him, block him. I'm already in a hot seat, don't have time for it. One of my mods, one of my shooters, get Ron Rona Noah Zero out. Get him out of here. We already have a hot seat. Get him out of here, please. The fans are, are saying he's di disrupting it. <coughs> All right, Crawford, now he's stalling. He's probably on Wikipedia, BoxRack, Google. There ain't no peace, block, peace that. Okay, now, okay, so he's comparing, he's comparing Crawford with Victor Postal to Madiaga coming off of a loss. So Ma Miguel Madiaga moving up from 126, right? Moving up off of a loss where he was knocked down by Oscar Valdez, also had a loss to Nicholas Walters, right? And Lomachenko looked physically bigger than him. And he was coming off a loss, two losses. In both of those losses, he was knocked down, had no real signature wins, and he moved up from 126 to 130. And you're comparing that to Victor Postal? Now, the Rigandau versus Gamboa, those are pretty even fine. You know what I mean? Some people can make argument. You've clearly lost that one. Strike one. There's no way you can say Victor Postal, as an opponent, brought the same level of momentum, challenge, and stuff as Madiaga. What the fuck? Again, Madiaga lost to Oscar Valdez and was knocked down. Victor Postal, his last performance before Terrence Crawford was stopping Lucas Matisse and making him quit. Now he's saying, nah, nah what? Nah what? Now you getting burned. Now you're trying to backtrack. Nah what? Nah what? You already are, you already have one strike. So if you we could just move on, but if you want to clean this up, this might this might be your second strike. 
So we could just move on to the next name, or you might get a second strike by trying to something you clearly lost. You clearly lost that round. You clearly lost comparing Miguel Mariaga coming off a loss and moving up in weight to a guy who's bigger than Crawford at the weight and coming off the po the postal Matisse win. And he was a champion. Mariaga wasn't a champion at 126, and he wasn't a champion at 130. You got cooked with that round. So you keep saying, nah, try for your second strike. Or I could just continue talking about the bums that Crawford faced. It's up to you. Like Floyd said, how you want it? How, how you want it? Toe to toe? Okay, how you want it? Don't run? Okay. I'm giving how you want it. So I would suggest you move on instead of trying to clean this up because you clearly lost that. By the moment Mariaga came out of your mouth, you lost. You compared Mariaga, who wasn't even established at 130 off of a loss, to a guy who was considered a 50-50 fight for Crawford. So I'm going to keep going. Next person, Felix Diaz from the Dominican Republic, beat Adrian Granados, Olympic gold medalist. He beat... Um, Sammy Vasquez when he's undefeated and he arguably beat Lamont Peterson at welterweight which was like 143 so he had experience at 140 and 147 and Olympic gold medalist so Felix Diaz got dogged by Terrence Crawford so who did who did Lomachenko fight that you would say had those types of wins a Sammy Vasquez undefeated win arguably beat Lamont Peterson beat a guy as tough as Adrian Granados and had Olympic gold medal Joystick, you about to get blocked too. Keep sticking up for him. Felix Diaz is a little dude though. Well, his little ass competed at 147, so I don't want to hear that. And he talked shit about Crawford. He, he had called out Crawford for a year and said he was scared. So if you want to make excuses, then you'll be in the hot seat next. We're not doing these pussy ass excuses in 2018. So get blocked just like your friend, whoever else is in the hot seat right now. Anyway, so who's Lomachenko's win that you, that you raid up there with Felix Diaz? <coughs> talking about he oh he was small but he fought at higher waist than Crawford so that takes the small thing out the window where's this dude at man Joseph Barclay get in the hot seat you'll get blocked next he said they're facts though you love saying that it's not a fact he was shorter but he had mass to him and he had fought at 147 so you you want to defend the dumb shit? You block too. <laughs> Listen, I run a train on Mob Deep. Y'all boys can't fuck with me, and we just have a block party right now. Anybody else keep? Everybody else keep saying stuff that that is not factual. You know what I mean? You can't argue that a guy was too small, but he fought at higher weights than Crawford. Where's this dude that's in the hot seat? Y'all got me jazzed up. I'm amped up. Why is he taking so long? Why is he taking so long, people? Felix Diaz. You said Crawford fights bums, right? And then we're going tip for tap on opponents, and now you stalling. Yo, moderators, count him down and then block him. See how they disappear? This is straight gladiator stuff. He said Crawford fights bums. So we're going head up with our different arguments. And then he just stopped arguing. Stopped debating in front of y'all. I mean, if that's not waving the white flag, I don't know what is. <coughs> hey, moderator. Get him out of here. It's been like 15, at least 15 seconds. His name is Antigua or Antica or something like that. He just stopped answering. We don't play them games. He was bold in the comment section before, and then you just stopped responding. Antifa. DJ Yo, straight shooter. Bah. Listen, I tell you, there's a new sheriff in town. All that, listen, I'm not always right, but I know when I'm right. And if y'all want to play these dumb games and, oh, Crawford fight bums. Okay, who's number one? Lomachenko. Okay, so if, if, if all of Crawford's opponents are bums, 
we just went one by one, list for list, and we we're gonna compare. You name someone who's significantly better than the person that Crawford fought, and you've seen he just stopped responding. Get these dudes out of here, man. Beating a dead horse, you don't like it, don't watch it. Pour out a little liquor. We having a candlelight vigil. Let's get it, man. These young boys can't beat me. We just had a, we had a, we had a light a candle for him, man. And Tifa couldn't be here. See you at the crossroads. <clears throat> Listen, that's why I said, Eagles Army, stand up. Don't be distracted. Don't look at likes and dislikes and stuff like that. Because the, the real test is however many dislikes we have, then that means I should be getting roasted that many times. If there's 60 dislikes, then there has, should be 60 people bodying me. Nah, I'm not going to be... Nah, you lying. Low budget film says you're going to be talking to yourself soon. You keep blocking everyone. Never. I got over 100,000 subs. And majority of the boxing fans aren't like this where they just say stupid shit that they can't corroborate. So that, that's never gonna happen. The only people getting blocked are casuals saying stupid shit and it's proven that they can't substantiate or back up what they said. So that'll never happen or I lose. And these motherfuckers fake, fake it and make fake accounts. So shout out to Ego Army. <clears throat> the real never dies. The fake might, but the real never dies. So I won't, I'll never be talking to myself because we always have the, the the boxing majority are probably good people, good fans, you know what I mean? Reasonable people, logical, thinking people. Not like radical fans that own man fans that love one man. So that ain't gonna happen. Y'all don't have, ever have to worry about that. Cause I mean how many live streams have I done where I've done hot seats? And the viewership's still there? Yeah, like like the person just said, big time. They come back if they get blocked with other fake accounts. So they can just keep getting blocked. They like zombies, parasites. <sighs> just the simple fact that Crawford was the only undisputed champ puts him at number one. See, that's that's a great point. Everyone keeps saying Crawford fight bums, but if if all you had to do is be in a bum ass division and get every belt, then why? Why has no one done it since Jermaine Taylor or Bernard Hopkins? If it's that easy, you know what I'm saying? Even legends like Pacquiao and Mayweather, they weren't, they're not getting like undisputed in each division. I mean, clearly they're great and they, they prove their worth in <clears throat> many other ways. But I mean, that's something that doesn't happen often. <coughs> and, and you have to look at it. Like people like Victor Postal, Julius and Dongo. See, this is, this is how you know it's the casual speaking, right? This is how you know it was the casual speaking because they consider, because it's not a huge name, that it's a bum. You know what I mean? Julius Ndongo is not, he's a good fighter, but he's not a, a huge name. Like, they would have preferred if it was like <coughs> Brandon Rios when he was at 140 or Mike Alvarado. Then they wouldn't have said that. You know what I mean? Be just because it's a bigger name. But that's not, you know what I mean? Julius Ndongo might have beat Brandon Rios or Mike Alvarado at 140, to be honest. <coughs> Actually, that's a good fight. When Julius Ndongo, him him beating Ricky Burns and Troy Anofsky, if he would have fought Brandon Rios when he was at 140, I don't know Brandon Rios would have beat him. I don't know Mike Alvarado would have beat him. But again, the casual fans, they just go off of the, the size of the person's name. Brandon Rios and Mike Alvarado had a good sized name at 140. Brandon Rios at 140 would have beat uh, Victor Postal to you guys. Honestly. Would Brandon Rios at 140 beat Victor Postal? So that, I, I want to know your honor. I'm just thinking of fantasy fights. Would Victor Postal lose to Brandon Rios when he was at 140? Probably, 
All right, AKA, we, we already, you in the hot seat, bro, because we already put you in a timeout. You, you, you served your timeout. Now you keep saying stuff. So I disagree with you. Why? Okay, why would Brandon Rios at 140 beat Postal? Why do you think that? We'll see who has a stronger argument, even though it's a fantasy fight. Come on, AKA, step up. You in the hot seat. What, what is Brandon Rios going to do with Victor Postal based on what you've seen from both fighters? And he made Matisse quit by outboxing Matisse, who's a, a big ass puncher and more of a boxer puncher and less of a just a pure brawler than Brandon Rios. This I gotta hear. And I think Brandon Rios, if he if Crawford was dwarfed by postal size, I'm pretty sure Brandon Rios, I've seen them on videos together, him and Crawford, and Crawford looked taller. So where's AKA? See, they just wanna say stuff because uh, whatever they want to side with someone or they're the same race or whatever they oh do it for la raza like okay so now explain why brandon rios would be victor postal when they were both at 140. I, I gotta hear this where's aka at aka must stand for another killed assassination in this fucking hot seat because you take it forever and you're about to get body see they just say what feels good for them they don't think it through. They don't break it down. That's what I'm saying. They're not used. They're not used to um, having resistance. They're used to just saying some drive-by shit, and that's it. Okay. Why we waiting for him to duck the question? I'm gonna ask, and this will help since it's a fantasy fight, which we can't prove either way. This will help it. I'm gonna ask you, the fans, the real boxing fans. Do you think Brandon Rios at 140 would beat Victor Postal or would he lose to Victor Postal at 140 before Postal fought Crawford and before like uh, Rios lost to um, Pacquiao? Would Rios beat Postal at 140? Yes or no? Lose or win? Okay, one of my moderators, count to 10 and get AKA out of here. The fans, <coughs> the fans have all responded. Fans have all responded. Actually, it's been 10 seconds. Get AKA out of here. He stopped responding because he knew he couldn't. Moderators, shooters. We need them, the kill, them kill streaks. Get AKA out of the. Thank you, DJ Yo. Thank you. See how they just stopped responding? Listen, I'm gonna give my argument since he's no longer with us. Brandon Rios, he's tough, but t uh, he got stopped by Timothy Bradley, right? Richard Brill at 135 outboxed him, and he should have lost that fight. Mike Alvarado in the second fight beat him and he to me Mike Alvarado all he did was box a little bit more than he did instead of just pure war so how's he gonna beat Postal who's even taller than all of them you know what I mean he was taller than Crawford I just I have not seen anything in Brandon Rios Brandon Rios is slow footed and all this and the other thing is Lucas Matisse like it's like Lucas Matisse versus Brandon Rios at 140, who would you really pick? Who would you pick? You know what I'm saying? Would you pick Brandon Reels to beat Matisse at 140? Because I would have to favor Matisse, me personally. Because I think Matisse, it, it, Matisse versus Ruslan Provodnikov is, is kind of a similar situation. Because you have the guy who's just a bit better of a boxer, he's going to turn more boxer. Lucas Matisse, to me, would have beat Brandon Rios all day. Now, I want to see Provotnikov versus uh, Rios because they fight the same. You know what I mean? And Matisse got frustrated with Postal, his size, his clinching, his jab, his boxing. So what is Rios going to do? You know what I mean? And Matisse, to me, probably hits harder than Rios. He's He has a chin, and he's more of a boxer puncher, and he couldn't even fade Victor Postal. So 
again, based on him getting outboxed by Pacquiao, Mike Alvarado, Richard Abril, he was losing to Diego Chavez at 147. How is he going to beat? What has he shown that he'll beat Victor Postal? Honestly. <coughs> they just say shit that they feel that they, it makes them feel good. Ruslan didn't quit versus Molina. What are you talking about? Do you guys even watch boxing? He said Rios might make Ruslan quit like Molina. But the fight went the distance. How did he quit? Man. Yo, can we get some last minute likes? Happy New Year, yo. Smash the like button, man. We working. 2018, a lot of great stuff coming. Hit the like button. I'm motivated for a good year. And Dongo Postal? Yeah, I think Postal's fighting Regis Progress, which is a very good fight. <clears throat> Provodnikov's got out of man style chin, for sure. Big respect to Ego. Happy New Year. I like Billy Joe Saunders. Um, I don't like how he's trying to play Danny Jacobs, but he looked good versus David Lemieux. <coughs> Ego Army, man. Salute. Joshua needs to fight Fury. Nothing else interesting. I disagree. Parker's interesting. Wilder's interesting. What do you mean? Shit, even Povetkin is somewhat interesting. DJ, yo. Happy New Year. Ego, do you think we'll see Garcia Spence in 2018? No. I think Sean Porter would get a shot before Spence or a Amir Khan rematch. I don't know. I don't know. I never really hear Danny Garcia mention Errol Spence, to be honest. So, I mean, I wouldn't put... I, I would say him fighting Amir Khan in a rematch, Keith Thurman in a rematch, or Porter would all be more likely. What do y'all think of Mikey Garcia? And he, he admitted that he turned down the Robert, Gar Robert Easter Jr. fight because <laughs> the money wasn't right. What do y'all think of that? What do y'all think of that? Turning down Robert Easter for the money and fighting Sergey Lipinets? Man, listen, I told y'all, my motto for 2018, show me. I don't want to hear Mikey Garcia beats Robert Easter, Robert Easter beats Mikey. When they, they're in similar weight classes, let's see them fight. I don't care what fight predictions people throw out there. Unless you guys are, like, undefeated with your fight predictions and you predict every fight, then it doesn't matter what you think. Show me. Let me see. Let me watch that. <coughs> I don't think... Robert Easter is an easy fight for Mike Garcia. I mean, Dante's Boxing Nation got an interview with Mike Garcia, and he admits that it's not an easy fight. So, all you all in the comment section, you're saying something that the fighter himself ain't even saying. You know what I mean? When, when the people were like, oh, Easter get killed, he'll get murdered, he'll get destroyed. Mike Garcia ain't even saying he'll do all that. So, how does that even make sense? Yeah, Mikey says it's a difficult fight. Yeah, he got the reach and height. So, I mean, Mikey, at least... At least Mikey's keeping it a buck. See, this is what we need to get in boxing. Shout out to Mikey Garcia. 
At least he's keeping it fucking trill and saying it's a difficult fight and wants to be compensated. You know what I mean? I'd at least prefer that than when when Kell Brook said, oh, nobody really knows Errol Spence. And um, basically, Errol Spence ain't done nothing and X, Y, and Z. Man, it's a good fight. Fans want it. And you know that. So at least Mikey kept it a buck and said Robert Easter is a challenge and there's difficulty that he presents. You know what I mean? But I'm sick of like <clears throat> everybody downplaying the opponent to make it like they ain't, they ain't shit. They ain't shit, beat them. <clears throat> Mikey also said he don't want to fight Figaro because of size. That's a little bit different because he said he doesn't know if he can make weight. And I mean, I feel him because in in, the, in that situation, Figaro missed weight by like seven to 11 pounds or some shit in one of his recent fights. You know, and he just fought his last fight at 147. So if you, Mikey, if he fights, if he fights a guy like Omar Figueroa, who's tough, and he was scheduled at 140, and he tries to do what Broner did to Granados <coughs> and change the weight, like I can't make weight, then that's like a waste of, it's a waste. Robert Easter doesn't really use his height and reach. He doesn't. He fights on the inside. That's that's where he like. But it's still a good fight. Despite what anybody says. That's a good fight. Because even though he doesn't use it, he's still undefeated. Mikey's undefeated. So what I mean, what is the question? I mean, realistically. Now listen. I keep it a buck on my channel. Brr. I keep it a buck. I would prefer, if if I had the choice, I would watch Mikey Garcia over Robert Easter Jr. I'm not knocking that man Mikey for fighting Sergey Lipinitz, but if we're being honest, like, I might even go to that fight. So, you know what I mean? He has a chance to, first of all, I respect Mikey. Second of all, I respect him for how he moves. Ever since he had the top rank um, contractual whatever bullshit where he wasn't fighting, he came out to fight. He can't, you know what I'm saying? He came out fighting the people like good name. Dejan's Latisha name was a knockout guy. He fought Elias Rojas as a tuna, fought Broner. So I'm not mad at him because he's at least taking challenges. Lomachenko's not taking these challenges. He's not. He's the one comfortable at the weight at 130. Madiaga moves up this year or last year now. Uh, Reagan now moved up two weight classes. Mikey's at least being flexible. He's being flexible with his weight. But <laughs> again, I keep it a buck. If someone said, hey, Robert Easter Jr. versus Mikey or Mikey versus Lipinitz, I would clearly rather see Mikey versus Easter Jr. at 35, where he's already a champion, than Lipinitz. But I'm not knocking the Lipinitz. But truth be told, Lipinitz, I was at his last fight. It was on the Wilder Stavern or one of them cards that I went to in New York. And Lipinitz arguably lost his fight to get the title. He didn't look that impressive to me. And I remember thinking, I remember saying to somebody, this is the dude that was kind of talking shit to Terrence Crawford. He, Crawford would have beat him, beat him down, down. Listen, Lipinitz is still champion, so I'm okay with the fight. He is, but everyone's saying Robert Easter gets destroyed. You, you would really rather see Lipinitz over Robert Easter Jr.? You know what I'm saying? Robert Easter Jr., he won his belt through a vacancy, just like Lipinitz, but it was in it was a better fashion. His fight with Richard Comey was was way way more entertaining and all that. So again, I'm not hating on Mikey for fighting Lipinitz because at least he's taking risks that Lomachenko's not by moving and flexing his weight, getting where you fit in. But if I had the choice, I would say Easter has a better resume than Lipinitz, and he's impressed me more. And I think it'll be a better fight. But Lipinitz, he, he does have like a 77% knockout ratio. The only difference is those can be tricky because he ain't fought nobody. He ain't really fought. And arguably the fight where he got the title, he arguably lost. So, you know what I'm saying? It is what it is. But uh, Robert Easter, I would like to see that fight. Or Jorge Linares or Lomachenko for Mikey if he beats Lipinitz. And the other thing is, you can't... Mikey versus Robert Easter already has a built-in storyline because of that Bout Billions connection. And Big Bro, Broner, 
got beat by Mikey. So see what little bro does. Kind of like when Broner lost to Madonna and they said, oh, big bro Floyd is gonna have to take care of Madonna for Broner. Similar situation. Y'all want me to go to Texas for that Lippinit shit? That Mikey versus Lippinit? Yo, let's see if we can get to 200, 200 likes, man. I'm about to head out of here. Angel, don't you live in, in New York? Beltran's a good name at 35. Yeah, but Lomachenko turned down the fight with Beltran because it wasn't enough time to prepare. <coughs> See, that's what I'm saying. The powers that be putting a lot of pressure on the boy Lomachenko. Because you should be able to fight a, a Ray Beltran guy with some losses. And that's a good stylistic challenge. So we can see where Lomachenko's at. Because you can't, if you fight Ray Beltran dumb, like in, in your defense ain't on point, then that's not a good look. That's not a fucking good look at all. If if, if Salito fought dirty and his, his power might have bothered you or something, man, Ray Beltran at 35, that's a da dangerous fight. Like I said, I was in Omaha, CenturyLink Theater, or CenturyLink Center, for the Crawford fight with Ray Beltran. And Crawford had to be on his P's and Q's. Lomach Ray Beltran didn't come to lay down. <clears throat> but Crawford, see, this is the thing. This is another reason I have Crawford number one, aside from him proving more and undisputed and more fights. <clears throat> Crawford has a better defense to me than Lomachenko. Period. Can I ask you a question before you bounce? Yeah, you might want to hurry up, though, because I'm about to get out of here. Oh, shout out to Angel, man, traveling for this boxing game. No, the media is putting the pressure on Loma just like Chaco Tito. It don't matter. It's still being, it's still being done. Beltran beat a Peruvian cab driver last fight. See, Joystick, you sound stupid as fuck because he beat a uh, Peruvian cab driver. Then why did Lomachenko say, I need a full camp to prepare for him? If Beltran's beating Peruvian cab drivers, Lyft drivers, and Uber drivers, and all that dumb shit y'all be saying, like, see, this, this is where y'all boys get fucked up because you, you, you can't shut up and you gotta let your emotions take over and your emotions put you in a bad place. Let me put this boy in a hot seat. And my question is very simple. Go to Fight Hub. Bob Arum, I think Lomachenko is feeling his way up. You have to understand what a great professional he is. I think he was going to fight Orlando Salido in a rematch. Salido pulled out, so then we had to get an opponent. We had Ray Beltran on the card, so we said fight Beltran at 35. Lomachenko said, no, I'm preparing to fight at 130. You want me to fight Beltran, give me notice, and I'll fight him at 135. So we about to play you like a game, Joystick. Explain that. Why does Lomachenko tell his promoter, who wanted him to fight another top-ranked fighter at 135, and Lomachenko says, no, I'm preparing for Salido or whoever at 130. You want me to fight Beltran, give me notice. I'll fight him at 135 if you give me notice. So if he's fighting the Peruvian cab drivers, as you say, then why did he need more time for him? See, you, you guys are making it difficult and you can't talk your way out of this, but have at it. Let's see. Joystick, this is to you. Why do you need more time <laughs> and a full camp? Now he's trying to cop a plea. Beltran is tough. But you just said he's fighting cab drivers. So what, what, who cares if he's tough? He was fighting cab drivers. I told you these emotions go. You, I don't know if y'all thought 2017. 2017 was the warm up. This is the christening. Y'all motherfuckers getting baptized. He did KO a cab driver. First of all, he, he KO'd actually a ranked guy. It was like a, a eliminator 
but you don't know shit about boxing. Second of all, his last fight wasn't even a KO. It went the decision. So another indication, you said his last fight, he KO'd a cab driver, and his last fight wasn't even a knockout. But you still want to go up against the dawn. You'll do fucking none. You still want to go up against ego, and you're not even getting your facts straight. So once again, he KOs cab drivers. So why is Lomachenko need more time for a cab drive killer? It's not looking good. You better use that joystick, try to find some kind of cheat code because you're getting bodied. All right, the people are giving you L's. Get him, one of my moderators, get him out of here. His name is Joystick Cast. He's ducking the, the rest of the question. I've already bodied him. The fans already said L's. Get him out of here. He's going up in weight, and Beltran is a tough veteran. No, you're already done. <clears throat> now, see, see how he's trying to cop a plea? Oh, he's tough. He's going up in weight, and he's a tough veteran. But you just roast, you tried to roast Beltran for knocking out cab drivers, but then you have no reason to, you can't describe or explain why Lomachenko needs more time to beat a guy who fights cab drivers. Ain't that funny. So, you, so you're basically saying Ray Beltran fights bums or he is a bum, but we need more time to fight this bum. We, we can't take this on. And the short notice, just so you know, was at least a month and a half because I just showed you the article and the announcement after Salido, it was done in June and the fight wasn't until August. So he could have fought Ray Beltran and chose not to. Shout out to L Dog from New Zealand. $5 shmoney gang. Loma got beaten by a cab driver at Uber, LOL. See, that's a good point. <clears throat> and I said it before. You guys, oh, you're hating Loma. I don't care about all that bullshit. Because if I'm hate, listen, if I'm a hater, it should be easy to answer these fucking questions that I'm asking you. Who has Lomachenko beaten that fights like Salido since he lost to Salido? Once again, top-ranked matchmaking. Who has Lomachenko, I'll say it again. Who has Lomachenko beaten that you would say has a style that's eerily similar to Salido since Salido? Right? No one, no one, exactly. He hasn't fought anyone like Salido since Salido. And oh, Salido pulled out. But what about the other times you were negotiating and you didn't want to pay the man? So Floyd Mayweather did this interview with Fight Hub, Fight Hype, excuse me, Fight Hype. <coughs> and he said Lomachenko getting underpaid and all this stuff. He's right. He's right. If Lomachenko is better than Ali, better than Floyd and what they say, then why isn't he getting more money? Well, how come Danny Garcia got more money in his fight with uh, Keith Thurman last year than Lomachenko got to fight a two-time Olympic gold medalist, which was supposed to be <clears throat> the, the best of the amateurs and all this shit. Floyd even said, he said, I got guys making that. I bet you Badu Jack probably got that for James DeGale, to be honest. Tank's getting like one point something mil probably. You know what I'm saying? Lomachenko is one of the biggest stars over there. <clears throat> and in 11 fights, he's fought some solid names. And he's made, barely making over a million. Triple G got five million to fight Kel Brook. Get these boys out of here, man. I'm out of here. Stay tuned to the channel. Body counts will rise. Let's get some last minute likes. If you like these live streams, this is the only way I can do them is if you guys help me on the engagement side. Because you know the haters are going to try to do drive-bys and hit dislikes without proving themselves because they don't want to step up for the hot seat because it has such a vicious reputation for getting people out of there. So make sure you guys, when you come in, smash the like button. Should be a customary thing. It's not much to ask. <clears throat> we talk about various things. Yeah, man. And see, this is the other thing that Top Rank does a lot to me. They have a prime fighter, Pacquiao, Lomachenko, whoever, especially if they're not black. And what they do is they sell them, tell you how great they are, blah, blah, blah. Cool. That's your fighter, blah, blah, blah. <coughs> but then they'll make all these sly, snoot comments about other people. Oh, yeah, yeah, da, 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 da. Pacquiao might fight Matisse. He might fight Broner. 
He might fight Mikey Garcia. He might fight Danny Garcia. He might fight Amir Khan. All these great fights, all of these great fights, and the fight we want least, that's the fight that they land on. Oh, even though we said Matisse, Broner, Mikey Garcia, Danny Garcia, Amir Khan, um, Errol Spence, Keith Thurman. We mentioned all these fucking names. That's seven great fights. Big names. And then you decide to have Tim Bradley three. What? And they do that often. And that's to me, that's the that's the old promoter shit. It's the old way of promoting to to the point where you <clears throat> like kind of oversell. You talk a big game about fights you know you're not gonna make. <clears throat> You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, Mikey will probably quit versus Lomachenko. But I guarantee you, even after he fights Limpinitz, if he beats him, I don't think Lomachenko's next fight will be Mikey Garcia. So it's like, what's the point to even say that? You know what I'm saying? What's the point of even saying that when you have no intentions of making that fight? <clears throat> and that's the thing. These promoters got to... I mean, shout out to Top Rank. One thing they have done is they've evolved in certain things, like their, their new press conference <coughs> when they the way they set it up they have all these chairs and all this light bright lights they've been using social media more they're they're putting fights on free tv so they are evolving and like keeping up with the times but certain old habits that old promoters have shown they still have too just like talk up all these great fights that the fans really want but then that's not what we get bottom line is this Lomachenko, if he's what they say he is, then nobody should be afraid to see him tested in certain fights that we feel would give him all the stripes to um, qualify him for some of the things and the notions that they're putting out there for him. Like, <clears throat> listen, y'all could y'all could get mad. I don't give a fuck because you won't step up in this hot seat and fillet me and prove me wrong but i've noticed a pattern oftentimes <clears throat> when a black fighter is in like a top spot a lot of people old media a lot of the old media fans and stuff they don't care how tough stringent that person's schedule is like for example terrence crawford i'm here the people who, who have you heard people say terrence crawford should fight jeff horn errol spence Keith Thurman. Those are all tough. Those are like the toughest fights. At you don't you don't hear people saying Terrence Crawford should fight um, Sammy Vasquez or the guy that beat Diego Chavez or Mike Alvarado. You know what I'm saying? They're saying Crawford should fight basically the top level guy. Floyd, he was number one. Oh, he needs to move up to one. He's done his thing for 20 years, but he got to move up and fight Golovkin. He got to rematch Canelo, who's improving, and he already waxed Canelo, right? But when Lomachenko, they put him, old media, puts him in number one spot. <clears throat> oh, he should he should fight Mikey Garcia, a guy he called out. Nah, he should fight Ray Beltran. Nah, he needs more time. He should fight um, a champion if Tank doesn't want to fight him. Nah. So it's like, what? <clears throat> it's crazy to me. It's pure madness. Pure madness that you could put him in that spot. But then you don't want to see... It's the same thing they did with Chocolatito. If you even mention Chocolatito moving up to fight Rigadow, they'll look at you like you spit in their plate. Because they were trying to protect him from that. They knew what would happen if he fought, if he moved up to 22. You getting stopped at whatever, 117, 118? What do you think Rigadow is going to do at 122? And I don't care that he quit versus Lomachenko because that was at 130. You know what I mean? That's what I'm saying. Crawford is that number one spot. In a lot of people's eyes, Andre Ward... Then they say Andre Ward got to fight Bevel and Kovalev and Barrera and Vodstick. All the toughest fights out there, Donna Stevenson, right? But Lomachenko, you put him in the number one. I don't put him in the number one. He's talented, but I don't put him number one pound for pound. They do, but then they also make excuses why he shouldn't fight Robert Easter, Jorge Linares, Mikey Garcia. Oh, they're in a different weight class. He called them out, though. Two, at least two of them, right? Oh, he should fight Tank. That's a good fight. Yeah, so are the Mexican champions. You know what I'm saying? Like Miguel Berchelt, who's 
probably Loma's height or bigger, and he's a good fighter, and he has a belt. <coughs> Funny how this this shit works. Hey, why'd you block L Dog? L Dog's cool. I don't understand why he got blocked. He just did a super chat too. So DJ Yo too. I don't know why you what what he did. Why you blocked him? L Dog's usually on point. <clears throat> DJ Yo too. Why'd you block L Dog? Well, you can unban him because he's a regular. He be doing super chats, and I, I never seen him <clears throat> like too aggressive. <clears throat> um, L Dog, <clears throat> yeah, he's from New Zealand. He's he be leaving super chats, and I never seen him uh, dis disrupt the whole streams and all that stuff. But anyway, that that's my two cents on the thing. Um, Joshua versus Parker, that's a solid fight. I'm good with that. <clears throat> um. Wilder versus Ortiz, dangerous fight, I'm good with that. And then the winners face each other. That's how it should be. But I'm telling you, with the me old media, I'm very curious to see who Lomachenko fights next. Because it has to be some, and see, the reason why the pressure is on Lomachenko, more so than Tank Davis or somebody, is because <clears throat> Tank is still 22, 23, Lomachenko's 29, two Olympic gold medals, and he's being praised to a to a level that people want to see him prove it now. They want to see how good he is. They're like, okay, you, you fought Nicholas Walters, good name, coming off a draw, long layoff game, you know what I'm saying? So people want to see some, like, it, this is my honest opinion, people. Floyd, <clears throat> Floyd and Roy Jones, they beat top class names, and it was because they were so skilled that they beat that person and made it look like it was nothing. Floyd beat Canelo. Not that Canelo has ever been a bad fighter because he beat Austin Trout. He was just coming off of that victory. You know what I mean? It's just the fact that Floyd's Floyd. You know what I mean? So his skill made it look like it wasn't shit. But if Angulo, James Kirkland, um, whoever else would have fought Jared Swift Heard or something, would have fought Canelo immediately after Canelo fought Austin Trout, then I don't think they would have beat him like Floyd. You know what I mean? Even if they did beat him, it wouldn't be one-sided like the Floyd fight. Floyd, I'm telling you, he beat guys like that, like the Diego Corrales, not because Corrales was weak, rest in peace to Chico, it's because of how good Floyd was. Same thing with Roy Jones Jr. It's not that James Tony was weak back then or Bernard Hawkins was weak and all these other dudes. Stop Virgil, he with a body shot. It's not that these guys were weak. They were ranked guys, David Telasco and all this. Um, that dude with the little mini dreads. These guys were all ranked. It's just Roy was Roy, and he made him he made him look like that. But with Lomachenko, I really feel that he's beating solid names, but the advantages are heavily in his favor. You know what I'm saying? The advantages are like <clears throat> matchmaking, like timing and stuff like that. Like you got Gary Russell when he was 24 and 0, had zero na Listen, we'll do a hot seat right now. Listen to me. Look at me in my eyes. We'll do a hot seat right now before I get off of here. Who named two people that Gary Russell beat before he fought Lomachenko? Two people that you feel were very good, solid quality wins. Two people. Because everyone gives Lomachenko a ton of credit for that win. But most of what Gary Russell has done in this sport has been after that loss. Not before. <coughs> See, once again, where are the cowards at? Gary Russell had, was like 24-0. and 0. Who did he beat? Name two people. Like, if someone said, oh, Floyd fought a young Canelo, who did he beat? I can name a couple people that he beat. Josecito, Carlos Baltimore, Shane Mosley, Austin Trout, right? I can name a couple people he beat before, but Gary Russell named two people. Yeah, Gary Russell said he was having a weight issue, but I don't like to make excuses like that. I don't know. He probably was, but I don't, I don't count that. <clears throat> so we know Gary Russell's a good fighter, but I mean, they were... <laughs> They were both guys who hadn't really proven anything. But the thing is, Lomachenko, 
already has such a vast amateur background. He's probably older than Gary Russell Jr., so he was equipped for that. He was equipped for that. You know what I'm saying? <coughs> and he was probably super motivated because he just lost to Salito. So, you know what I mean? He came correct. And that's that. See, y'all can't answer simple questions. Who did Gary Russell beat at the time he fought Lomachenko? Montel Griffin, yep. And Roy Jones beat him the first time and they had that bullshit hit him while he was down, DQ and all that. That's what I'm saying. See, Roy Jones, Roy Jones was was a boy. Oh, L Dog said he fucked up. Well, yeah, man. Um, moderators too. <clears throat> I'm not blaming you because he admitted to his wrongdoing or whatever. But just look for the regular. Some people are regular, so you know what I mean. Everyone has off times and off days. Some of these fans are regular, so try to remember some names if you guys can. <clears throat> um. The regulars are usually cool. It's, it's usually the radical ones that we have to be more aggressive with. <clears throat> That's what I'm saying. I just, for Lomachenko, I just want to see him face somebody that there can be no excuses. They have momentum. They're stronger than him. They have more speed. They have equal amateur experience. They're naturally his side. You know what I'm saying? St something like that where we could say, whoa, okay. Everything was not in favor of Lomachenko leading up to this fight. And realistically, I don't recall <clears throat> I don't recall a person that I would say fits that bill for Lomachenko. I really don't. Like good momentum, like killer power, you know what I mean, at that weight class. I just, I don't know, man. I just can't think of that. So that's what I'm saying. If Lomachenko fights at least a few of the people that I've named for him, then he'll get unadulterated credit. It's very simple. <clears throat> Lomachenko's good, but <clears throat> I want to see him fight. Like even Danny Garcia. Danny Garcia gets so much hate. But if you really think about it, I can name several fights where Danny Garcia was not supposed to win. He was in there with styles that could plague him. And he won. Zab Judah. Zab Judah is quick as hell, much faster than Danny Garcia. He's a southpaw. At the time, I don't know about now, at the time people were saying Zab Judah, his style is all wrong for Garcia. Garcia punches too wide, he's too slow, he's a club fighter. Amir Khan, Eric Morales in the first fight. Lucas Matisse was supposed to knock Danny Garcia's head off. I literally remember Danny Garcia was at the PBC card when Matisse knocked out Peterson. Everyone's like, oh shit. And then they showed Danny Garcia. Then he stood up and he started clapping. He's looking at the camera, doing this and shit. And people were like, oh, look at Danny Garcia. He's fucking scared. He's scared of what Matisse just did. Matisse's gonna knock that boy's head up. So they always counted Danny Garcia out. Y'all can say, oh, he's fighting Brandon Rio. Fuck all that. Cause y'all, he has a good resume. Oh, but he lost to Herrera. He did, but they gave it to him. Oh, he lost to Pitt. Fuck all that. He's a good fighter, and he has a good resume. And most importantly, as I just said, he has fought and won in situations where he wasn't supposed to. <coughs> Lomachenko, I literally cannot think of a fight where even the Gary Russell fight, <coughs> where he was like this massive underdog, and he had everything stacked against him, and he pulled it together and showed like Ward was supposed to, he's Ward, he's pillow fisted. He had been more inactive than Kovalev. This was Kovalev's light heavyweight division and Kovalev loses to Ward twice. Kovalev's considered the puncher. So who has Lomachenko fought like that? Where he had to move up and face a lot, like a, <coughs> a guy with all the belts except for one. That was a huge puncher and <coughs> not a David Lemieux one dimensional puncher, but a good ass boxer. You know what I'm saying? A good boxer puncher. I, I just really can't think of it. I mean, you can say Reagan now, but once again, a guy two, two weight classes below him that couldn't deliver. So, if you fight Mikey Garcia, people like that, then it's not, no one can say nothing about that. <clears throat> That's what I'm saying. Look at Big George, shout out to you. He says, Loma's chin been tested. I mean, you tell me, people, 
a lot of people don't have the experience or the style to hit him or they whatever happens when they fight him. But they, has his chin been chest, tested? Exactly. See, and listen, yo, we're almost at 200. Walters barely even threw any punches. What are you talking about? Walters looked like he didn't want to be there. Let's get to 200 likes. Hit the like button. So, I mean, Walters is a big puncher, but what punches was he landing? He didn't do anything the whole fight. Listen, this is to Jaden. He said, Ego, what's up with this dude trying to expose you on YouTube? Listen, don't come to my channel. I told everybody. No, I don't care. If there's someone on YouTube, let them do their thing. God bless. Have a great 2018. Don't tell me about anybody unless they're doing better than me. If they have a verified channel with 100K or better, they have more numbers than me, then don't tell me about them. No, that's like because now it feels like you you aspire for them or some trying to create an issue and <clears throat> solicit that we don't do that we don't do free promotion because when I came into the game I never diss anybody I didn't say anything about Ellie I wasn't leaving crazy comments on his video fight hype none of them so don't come to me with that chicken shit <clears throat> again I'm gonna say it one more time and you will be blocked if you keep trying to create and stir up issues I do not give a fuck about any other channel but mine and what I'm working on. And if they're not doing better than me, then don't mention them to me. If they got 200,000, 150,000 subs, they're verified, then that's something different. Holler at me, let me know what's being said. Because most motherfuckers like that, they're actually at the fights when I go. So if there's an issue, then, <clears throat> you know what I mean, it could be addressed there. But if it, you know what I'm saying, someone 400 subs, I don't give a fuck. <clears throat> anyway, um, Whoever just said, whoever just said that Lomachenko chin has he been tested? That's the good point. Like, has his chin been tested? You know what I mean? And, and you, I watch too much boxing. It's unrealistic to think that nobody in no fight in no weight class can hit you and everyone's gonna quit. I mean, it's just not a reality. So yeah, he's he's doing good. He's doing good. Yo, bro, I think you explain yourself too much to haters of your channel. Well, I don't care. Then go to another channel. You guys, I, I, I handle, this is my channel. I handle it accordingly. I'm a people person. I'm a real person. So if you don't like it, then you don't have to be here. I mean, run your own channel and you can run it how you want. But anyway, has Lomachenko ever been chin checked? I don't know. And people always like, oh, Pacquiao got knocked out by Marquez, but he at least fought a fighter like Marquez to get knocked out by him. Um, oh, Floyd got rocked by Shane Mosley. He fought a Shane Mosley level guy that, that actually touched him. But what did he do? He came back and dominated Shane Mosley, won every single round. That's not natural, bro. That's not ordinary, bro. So to me, people look at things like that as a negative Oh, Ward got knocked down by Kovalev. That's a positive to me. That's a positive to me. <clears throat> it's a positive because it shows the adversity. Even Joshua Klitschko, it shows me adversity. It shows that, hey, when the going got tough for Joshua and Klitschko was on that ass, what he can do, that he at least is going to show heart. You know what I mean? Unless he's like so discombobulated uh, <clears throat> where he can't move or something. You know what I mean? Same thing with Ward. Yeah, he was on all fours. He got stuck, got caught with a beautiful shot, but he got back up and fought harder. Danny Jacobs versus Golovkin got back up and fought harder. <coughs> People are anointing Lomachenko with 11 fights. He hasn't been in those predicaments. And I highly doubt... <laughs> Listen, if you... Let me be his matchmaker. Let me be his matchmaker. I promise you we could see some challenges because we've seen it in his second pro fight. We've seen challenges, but it has to be the right style, the right attributes. You know what I'm saying? It has to be the right attributes. If you keep matching them with certain people, with uh, inactivity, coming off a loss, moving up in weight, um, don't have amateur pedigree, then yeah, all these fights are going to look like that. But I'm not... Look at Golovkin. He's a hell of a fighter. He's a silver medalist, right? <clears throat> silver medalist. When he stepped... He, no matter who, he, he had like 30-something fights 
He was knocking all them dudes out. No one had been 12 rounds with him. The first time he fights a guy that I consider had a lot of momentum, had a good amateur background, has power, uh, an inch or so taller than him, and had some signature wins, Sergio Mora, Peter Quillen, Caleb Truex, who is now a champion, beat the shit out of James DeGale. Now, all of a sudden, we don't see Golovkin get the knockout. Hmm. Hmm. 23 motherfuckers all got knocked out. Nobody had been 12 rounds. But now, a guy who's been knocked out, all of a sudden, he goes the difference or the distance with him. Then you fight Canelo, who really don't have much experience at 160. He has the size, but he hasn't acclimated at all to the weight. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? And then he don't get knocked down or knocked out, and y'all motherfuckers were saying he was going to get knocked out. What does that show you, people? Like, honestly, if you're in your heart of all hearts, fuck all the old Canelos, a pussy, and Triple G, this, like, in your heart of all hearts, what does that show you? That shows you that when the competition gets real, the fights get harder. You know what I mean? Even levels, shout out to E1 or Element. That's exactly what it is, level. Because even, like, Chino Madonna, one of my favorite performances of his was Broner. But even in that fight, if you go back and watch the fight, not no casual shit. Oh, because, see, the casuals say stupid shit. Like, I was talking to someone on, on the broner Madonna fight, and they're like, Broner needs to shut the fuck up. That's why Broner got knocked out by Madonna. Do you guys know the difference between a knockdown or knockdowns and a knockout? He literally said he'd been knocked out by Madonna, which didn't happen. But anyway, the real boxing fans know... If you really watch that fight, Chino did his thug thizzle. He did his thing. But in them late rounds, Broner was actually giving Chino some work. And he actually hurt Madonna. If you really watch that fight. <clears throat> but for the for majority of the rounds, it was the, the Madonna show. But Madonna, to me, again, that had to show this is what I'm talking about when I'm talking about adversity. Even though a fight he was dominated, Broner, Broner showed heart. Wasn't there to be stopped. And he gave uh, Chino some... <clears throat> tough last round <clears throat> Amir Khan blasted the fuck of Madonna in the first round he got back up and had to fight through it Lomachenko we're not really seeing him last time we've seen him in major adversity was based on a certain style which he's never fought since then so I, I like the adversity I mean Canelo losing to Mayweather he looks like a better fighter he looks like a literally a better fighter him in the Triple G fight I look to see Canelo make adjustments in the rematch and he's probably gonna fight Golovkin. But with Lomachenko, okay, Canelo gets called all these names, right? Name Canelo's Mayweather or Golovkin. I mean, excuse me, name Lomachenko's Mayweather or Golovkin. So the threat level that Mayweather presented to Canelo at the time and the threat level that Triple G presented to Canelo at the time, name someone who, who you think presented those same adversities for Lomachenko that Loma fought. I'll wait. So, okay. <clears throat> low budget films, we're going to get your low budget ass out of here in a hot seat. You just said Rigandow. So, who are you comparing Rigandow to? Floyd versus Canelo or Triple G? Let's first get that out of, uh, like, <laughs> you said Rig. I'm going to make, like I said, I'm going to challenge you guys to think about what you said. You about to get that work. I said, name someone who presents the same level of threat. So, Rigonow presented the same level of threat to that Triple G did to Canelo or Floyd did to Canelo. Let's be clear so I know which one you're arguing for. Because you just blurted out Rigonow real quick. <clears throat> Come on, low budget films. No, 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 no. Stop that. Two time gold medalist, Rigo can't be compared by either. Answer the question. I said, name somebody, name can, the challenge that Canelo faced in Golovkin, where Golovkin was at his career, where Canelo was at his career, where Mayweather was, where Canelo. Name somebody that presented that level of, of challenge to Lomachenko. And you said Rigondeaux. So I want to know who you're comparing it to. Mayweather versus Canelo or Triple G? That's all I want to know. And we can start from there. Shout out to Christian. Be on deck with the headshot. Red shot. The red dot headshot. Because I know I'm about to fry this boy. Because I seen he was putting stupid shit. Now we're going to turn this low budget B movie 
and show them you if you a B movie you can't fuck with a blockbuster. You know what I'm saying? This is like the Transformers, the Fast and Fast and Furious Seven. We high budget, not no low budget bullshit, weak ass acting and weak ass points. <clears throat> no, listen, I made a, a comparison. You're ducking the question. Rigo presented a threat to Loma. He's a two-time gold medalist. You're ducking the question. The question is very simple. I said, comparatively speaking, Canelo stepped up to fight Floyd Mayweather. Fact. Came up short, but he stepped up for that. And we know what Floyd does well. We know what Canelo does well and what he's lacking. So that fight, and same thing with Golovkin versus Canelo. Who has Lomachenko fought that presented those types of threats? Canelo having slow feet, being in there with a master class boxer like Floyd Mayweather, right? And arguably TBE. Golovkin being two inches taller, a crazy jab, undefeated, and he has knockout power. And Canelo didn't really acclimate to the division. You say Rigondeaux because he's a two-time gold medalist, but you don't say that he was two divisions. Since we're, we're on the number two, let's talk about how Rigondeaux was two divisions under him. So how is that comparable? Golovkin's not two divisions under Canelo. If it, in actuality, Canelo came up to Golovkin's division. So that's a horrible comparison. Even Floyd, it was at a catch weight, but Floyd was 13 years older and he's arguably TBE. And Floyd had fights at 54 before. He had fought Cotto and De La Hoya. So your comparison is not looking good. Looking shaky, baby. <coughs> so I don't consider the Rigondeaux having <coughs> the, the same advantages that Floyd had over Canelo, that Triple G had over Canelo. They want you to have that L so bad. Look, he's trying to cop a plea. I'm not comparing Rigondeaux to any of them. I'm just saying he has a two-time gold medal and is very hard challenge for Lomachenko. These young boys can't beat me. But you have to... Okay, if we're going to talk about facts, he does have two gold medals, but so does Lomachenko. So that kind of... Doesn't that... You know what I mean? Like, doesn't that... If you have a positive two... And a negative two, isn't that a zero? So it doesn't kind of neutralize out. And then you have to look at some of the other dynamics of like size and, and different things like that. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, they both had that. It's not like Lomachenko had 10 amateur fights and, and Rigondeaux had all this pro level experience. You know what I'm saying? So that's the difference. And now you're copying the police saying, I'm not comparing. The whole question was name someone that Lomachenko fought with the same level of adversity. And then you said Rigondeaux, but now you're saying you're not compared. Let's vote. If that man low budget film proves he ain't a blockbuster film, put your L's up. Now he's trying to bring up Troy King and me and other shit because he can't answer the question. You lose, my friend. <laughs> bye bye, low budget. Block. Get him out of here, man. We handed out caskets for days. See how they always try to, oh, I'm not saying that. Or you and Troy King said this. Listen, I, I I get so many fight predictions right, I'm entitled to lose and get a fight prediction wrong. I didn't downplay anything. I'm merely stating facts. I thought Rigondeau would be able to overcome all obstacles because he had did it before. He didn't. My prediction was wrong, but that still doesn't change the fact that Lomachenko has not fought somebody with the types of deficits that other people have, including Canelo. Canelo was up against Golovkin, a guy that people said were gonna knock him out. Do you guys understand me? Danny Garcia was in there with Lucas Matisse, a guy who was gonna knock him out according to the populace, right? Most people didn't have, including Nicholas Walters, if you look at the situation, I know I didn't. I said seven reasons Lomachenko beats Walters. You know what I'm saying? So <clears throat> most people didn't have really anyone beating Lomachenko that he fought, including Salito, who did beat him. Man, these young boys can't beat me. I'm out. Shout out to y'all. Happy New Year. Walters was inactive. That's what I'm saying. Like, listen, I look at everything. When Canelo fought Golovkin, Golovkin was undefeated. 
Golovkin had just fought in March with Danny Jacobs, tough fight. I thought he lost it, but still, they gave him the win, so he still got his belts. <coughs> and he's bigger than Canelo, taller than Canelo, has a crazy jab. So, you know what I mean? There's adversity that Canelo has to, has to deal with there. Period. Lomachenko, I still haven't yet. Yet, if he fights like a Mikey Garcia, that's a step in the right direction of a guy that has some level of, um, he may not be as fast as you, but he has power. He's knocked people out at 35, and he has good ring IQ. And he has um, sparring experience with Pacquiao, Edwin Valero, shit like that, man. I'm not doing any more hot seats. These bums, <coughs> these bums can catch it on the next one. I already, I already <coughs> bodied enough people. I'm about to get out of here. <coughs> All right. Big George, I got to put him in the hot seat. See, I didn't even want to do another hot seat, but you in the hot seat. Again, dumb comparisons. Canelo was doing the same thing with Khan, though that was a mismatch. Yeah, it was a mismatch, but he has other fighters <coughs> that he fought aside from Khan. That's just one of many. What about Angulo, Kirkland, Floyd Mayweather, Miguel Cotto? You know what I'm saying? You gonna bring, you gonna bring up one fight? That's cool. He shouldn't have fought Khan. I agree with that. But <laughs> he still has other fights where everything was not in his favor. Austin Trout. There were a lot of people picking Austin Trout because Canelo at that point we didn't know how good he was. He says he agrees now, so I guess we have a false alarm on the hot seat, man. <laughs> Shang Tsung, that's that's what y'all calling me now with the hot seat? Man, the bottom line is people in 2018 especially, you got to just rep. <clears throat> you got to just claim some real shit in boxing. And, and like for me, <clears throat> like I said, Bob Arum on Lomachenko versus Garcia. Mikey Garcia will probably quit. If Mikey will quit, let me see it. Because I don't believe that. I've been wrong before, but it's a good fight. It'll make money. I want to see Mikey Garcia quit. That sounds entertaining to me. Because he's not talking like he'll quit. <clears throat> And then again, unlike Rigandau, Rigandau wasn't talking like he would quit either, but he's two divisions under. Mikey ain't two divisions under, <laughs> right? And see, this is what I'm talking about. Mikey, if he fought Lomachenko, there's clear cut advantages for Lomachenko. Lomachenko's foot speed, probably his angles, his just overall speed. He has two time gold medals that Mikey doesn't have. But then there's also clear cut advantage. Mikey clearly, clearly has the the power advantage to me you know what i mean good resume spar with great people good trainer you know what i'm saying so it's a fun fight bigger this head looks huge next to lomachenko <clears throat> that's all i'm saying man if lomachenko keeps getting if they keep saying he's number one then show me some behavior of a number one powerful power y'all want crawford to fight errol spence that's cool I'm down, I'm, I'm down with it. And it sounds like both of them are down with it when it happens. <clears throat> but, like, it's just, man, black fighters have to do so much more. I don't give a fuck what none of y'all talking about. They literally do. Crawford, <laughs> he called out Keith Thurman before he even got to welterweight. Even though he's not going to fight Keith Thurman, most likely next, that probably has more to do with Keith Thurman because he's injured than anything you know what i mean i think crawford really would fight thurman in his first fight he called him out but even still his first fight seven pounds higher he's gonna try to fight a champion in jeff horn and jeff horn is the one that if anybody seems like they're making excuses to not fight crawford right so lomachenko okay let's say he's the best at 130 okay <laughs> you you move up five pounds and fight a champion in your first fight Crawford's trying to do it. And they're saying you're better than Crawford. 
you're ranked higher. Golovkin's number two, ESPN says Loma's number one, and Crawford's number three. So how is it Crawford can move up seven pounds and immediately fight a champion? But you need more time for Ray Beltran. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy, it's crazy the standards, the double standards. Fight Robert Easter your first fight. Mikey Garcia, Jorge Linares. <coughs> even even like, let's say Ward moving up and fighting Sullivan Barrera. It's an undefeated puncher that's bigger than him at light heavyweight. So fight Ray Belcher in your first fight. A guy like that. Fight Jose Ramirez if he gets past Amir Monk. He called you out. Listen, Murder She Wrote says, Ego, in a hypothetical situation, what would you say if Loma were to make Mikey Garcia quit? Listen, I don't do hypothetical situations. Mikey said he wants to fight, Loma called him out, and let's see it. And then we could take it from there. If Mikey quits, then I'll get a video and I'll be like, wow, I didn't think Mikey would do that. And then we could take it from there. But I, what's the point of talking about hypothetical situations when that hypothetical could be a reality. You know what I'm saying? That's that's just how I operate. Why are we doing um, fables and fantasies and shit when it can actually happen? Hey, hypothetically, there's no hypothetical... Look at it. Look at it. Bob Arum on Lomachenko versus Garcia. Mikey will probably quit. So what is there to talk about? What is hypothetical? Mikey said he wants it. He said he'll come to 35. Loma's team said they had plans to go to 35. They called out Mikey. So there's nothing hypothetical about it. Let's see it. I told you, 2018, we on that brand new shit. Let's see it. That's all I'm going to say. Let's see it. <clears throat> like, and see, this is what I'm saying. This is what people prefer. A lot of fans are scary, and they're, they're cowards. A lot of cowardice in terms of the fan. They talk this big game, but they don't want to see it. So it's better to say, oh, Bruce Lee versus Jet Li, who would win? Bruce Lee's dead. That can't happen. You know what I mean? Let's talk about Jet Li versus Donnie Yen from Ip Man. That can happen. They're both still alive. You know what I mean? But they don't want to talk about the actual Tony Ja and Jet Li, two guys who are alive and well fighting each other. They want to talk about Bruce Lee, a guy who's dead. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, Floyd, he, he, he'll get beat by Loma. He's not at 130, and he can't make 130 at this point of his career. <clears throat> he just fought Connor at 54. How the fuck are you going to make 130? So once again, let's talk reality. Instead of bringing up Floyd, talk about how Lomachenko will give Crawford hell at 140, 147, or at a catchweight. How he'll beat Crawford. They're both with top rank. That could happen if they wanted it to happen, which we know they don't. <coughs> And it's just like that, man. I don't think Lenata's fight would be easy for Lom. I don't either. But again, this is all speculation until you show us. Until you show it. I got to see it. I got to see it. Maybe it's easy for Loma. Maybe it's not. But those are the fights that, like I said, would prove where Loma's really at. There's nothing you can say wrong about Hart. He just beat Olympic gold medalist. He has good size. Boxes his ass off. Speed. Fluid combinations, knows the, the basic of boxing, took an early loss and bounced back. You know what I'm saying? Mikey Garcia. But y'all want to see him fight Tank, right? Okay. Crazy. And I'm out. Let me know what you all think. Stay tuned to the channel. Keep it locked. We working, baby.